Okay, you ready? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Thunk Tank. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Thunk Tank. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. There you go. Welcome. To, come into our. Come into our Thunk Tank. <laughs> Luke, don't switch to the <laughs> other peanuts. <laughs> Welcome to the Thunk Tank. Come in the tank. We're thinking, and we're thinking, <laughs> and we're thunked, and we're thunked. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm probably more beer than man if we go far enough back at this point. Three, two, one. Alright, we're going. He said one, and three and two. We never know whether or not to start on zero or one. Welcome to the Thunk Tank podcast. And we're live. <laughs> oh, now you're saying we're live. Episode five. Oh, sorry. Who gets to do this? Shit. Who's in charge? We could cycle through. Do the five, four... Oh, okay. They can't see you. Yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Uh, oh. Well, welcome to episode five. This is Conspiracy Theory Part 2. Um, yes. It's still December I 2017. Guess. Or is it? It's December 19th, 2017. Oh, we're going specific dates. That... I've learned how to say dates. You're putting <laughs> us on the spot now because people are going to, when this episode comes out, we can't make this episode come out like a week now from this... now. The CIA can go back and map our timelines. We'll get and... to the CIA, Johnny. The CIA is brains. coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a few housekeeping announcements. We are now on iTunes, and oh, I bet by the, the time yeah. uh, this is published, we will be on Stitcher and Google Play. Yeah, we have a, a podcast hosting place that uh, you can find us at, where we like blog the audio file so and the, the show name? notes and all that shit. We should say the name. We don't know the name, do we? Um, it's in. It just well, if you're listening like... to us, you found it. <laughs> You've done, you've done the work. Um, uh, we have a Gmail account that you should hit us up at. That'll be in the show notes. And by the time you hear this, we'll probably have our Patreon going so that each of you fuckers can give us, like, a dollar. Why are you so angry? Uh, I, I, really I had a Is it coffee. You just chugged your coffee? I had my first coffee at 3 p.m. today, so. That actually explains uh, it quite Quite Usually well. I it, it I don't realize that I haven't had coffee until like 3 p.m. and like I go to just like take a shower or yeah. something and, and I realize it's difficult. You're used, you're used to. Yeah. Well, it's like all right, where did I put the clean towels? I'm like, whoa, where did I put the clean towel? Like I can't think basic <laughs> thoughts. Yeah, you the get gears kinda, come like yeah. to a grinding halt. It's not quite aligned, right? I know um, that feeling. All so well. uh, you know. The Patreon thing is sort of like you pledge to give an amount per episode, and at this point, it's just like, help us to keep the lights on, you know? We'll take it whatever. Costs, it costs a few bucks a month to host a podcast, uh, take some time to, like, schedule this shit. Uh, <laughs> all right, I'm, Joe, I'm kind of angry. Take over I, I, for okay, me. Okay, so what he's trying to say I need to, to say finish is... my coffee. I'm going to let you take the wheel What he's for trying to say is that we love you all, and we appreciate your support in Thanks any for way listening. possible. Yeah. Now, give, Thanks, us, now give us some fucking money. No, yeah. the, the way I worded it on the oh, Patreon no, thing sorry. was like, Pretend you saw us in a bar. You just have to buy us a beer per month, like one dollar per episode. Yeah. Let's say four episodes per month. That's like buying us a happy hour beer. Yeah. Yeah. Which, Literally, like we nice will use to the do. money to get good beer. And we'll share that. And good then we'll beer share with you. that beer virtually with you. Like yeah. we'll drink it. You won't and, drink it. <laughs> Unless you're one of our friends, then you're probably with us drinking it right now. <laughs> you're probably in studio. <laughs> There's nobody here. We're we're alone. <laughs> um. But also, like, we can, like, travel and get beer. Like, one of the great things with craft breweries is, like, to go on a journey. Like, a, we could do a, a mecca travel episode, journey actually, and, like, get amazing beer. Yeah, why not? Well, we could do do anything, yeah. It's, like, spiritual. It, it's not just that, <laughs> besides the beer, which is great, is if we actually get money, we could put more time and effort into this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do like, more we can, episodes. Well, there, there's two ways I see I, that. I already like, spend way too much time on <laughs> Right. No, no, no. Like if yeah. we if we With make if we uh, like enjoy the sort of more topical versions of the episodes, then we can put more research, energy, thinking into the topics. But also, if we find out that the beer wandering topicless episodes are working better, because we don't know what the fuck we're doing, we need uh, consumer feedback. Well, is what we need. Th- like if I can program three hours a day to just be on the internet and just like wander around. That's like fuel for like podcast wandering conversation. Program? What do you mean program? 
I just mean like like find the time in my day where I'm oh, going to sit and like that, go yeah, down like yeah. wormholes in the internet yeah. and like like today well, like I'm already, I was I'm already hearing doing about it. There's like plenty of to do. There's no shortage of things to wormhole down. There's no shortage of wormholes and rabbit holes to fall down oh, on the plenty. internet. Yeah. 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 And some of them could be like 20 minute TED talks that lead to a Wikipedia article that lead to a this that you go to the sources and you find a that like it's really cool shit, but it does take time and we're all freelancers more or less. I think more so than less. I, I would say some some months of the year less so than more. Yeah. In that I mean, if, I'm not getting enough gigs. I was gonna say. I don't so if you're a musician, specifics, but also but... hire me for that too. Yeah. If you need editing uh, all right, services, all right, all right. Let's, let's keep let's keep the side projects out of this. <laughs> all right. right. So I do we not some... I do not endorse uh, whatever. All right. Musical we, have, we have some lovely beers. Just here get today. in touch with us is the main housekeeping point. Let's get to the beer. If you give We're... us enough money, you can get a. Uh, uh, don't make okay, promises, never. John. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no mugs, no. We yeah. can't mail beer. We, we actually got pretty thunked and offered to do that last time. No, we well, offered to say... email a picture of a mug. That's oh, we all oh, we thank did. thank God. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought it was worse, like, actually doing work. Nope. Uh, can I... Yeah, can go I ahead. Th- can I throw a quick quote out that I wanted to share last week that I think is relevant right now? Absolutely. Uh, always do sober what you said you do drunk. That will teach you to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> it's an Ernest Hemingway quote. So uh, yeah, he, know, uh, he has. Some, so it's sort of like you know, experience. keep yourself in check. Like do what your drunk brain wanted you to do, and you'll find out like the dark cobwebs in your mind. Or have a great oh, time. I thought of it as more. I keep this up here to remind myself that like. If I say that, if you give us enough money, will whatever I was gonna say, I should have to stick. Oh, to I see. I really, yeah. I really it's don't like want a pledge. to. So it's like a thunk tank contract with yeah. you, the listener. Yeah, it's a if, thunk pledge. If we say we'll do something, uh, we'll do it, but for the fact that we don't have any money. Right. So give us money. The spirit is there, which is what really <laughs> well, matters. I was gonna, I was gonna sign you up, Luke. That if we get someone, if we got enough money, you could record a uh, ringtone for someone or something oh i'll definitely do that yeah but you could do that yeah i, don't I was thinking of making our intro like recording myself playing trumpet like that you know the intro I, that's to... what I, was, I was asking about is there like a good trumpet because that would work really well by the but... way if if you're a musician and you're listening um you may have heard that our intro is like a really out of tune violin i think it's beautiful it's a mozart I... uh violin piano sonata it's it's uh a student recording it's like you know, a random file I found on a computer. But aren't we a student recording, basically? <laughs> well, we're a student podcasting group. But I thought it was well, hilarious because it sounds like a good alive. violinist who's drunk. And this is mm. a funk, drunk tank kind of vibe after all. So it was, like, better than if I recorded really good music. That's, That's the fair. Point. But I think that works to our... So don't think we suck vibe. at music if you, like, have an ear for music. We know it's out of tune. That's the point. I don't know how many expert music. Well, maybe some well, expert music. I'm in a music so, circle yeah. as my main circle, so right. if I share this podcast with them, yeah, I had some I, writing, I writing do, folk. I who, do suck at music, so my friends can ignore that. I had some writing folk who were talking about the podcast, and I was like, "Oh shit, you're listening! I gotta up my game of smart writer shit." I say because I have well, not, yeah, I've I mean, not been on that ball. I think the point is like we're all coming at coming at this from a different angle, like um, similar but also different. So it's like sure. you know. Bring your angle hardcore. Similar but different. Every politician. Should we get to the topic? We should get to the beer. Oh fuck. Okay, <laughs> beer first. Let's make that quick. Yeah. Um, we have we have some good ones today. In it's past episodes, ones. we've been doing IPAs mostly. Yeah. Um, so we we kind of went uh, a little darker. You got to go dark sometimes. This episode. Yeah. And this might be. I a like my beer like I episode. like my men black. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's from Airplane. That's not me. I like my beer. It's like also you. <laughs> Well, it's also you, me. You like your beer like you like your what, Johnny? My 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 slaves. <laughs> what I meant I meant free. <laughs> what did you think I meant? I thought. Um, anyway, no, I, I was laughing at the joke because you said who free. doesn't like free beer? All right, Johnny, yeah. what beer are you drinking? Um, you got a well, good one today. I saw it. I uh, I haven't been on an IPA kick. I've been because we do this different this locations, but. I'm drinking a New England IPA I made. It's my first attempt. Oh, nice. Uh, I like real that juicy, style. hazy, fruity. I was going to say, we uh, we can see Johnny now through the camera, and it's definitely a, a hazy juice bomb of a beer. Looks and delicious. And it has nothing to do with the hazy webcam mm, He's either. drinking it out of a very nice tiku glass, a collaboration between Other Half and Burial. Um, any beer geeks listening, you'll know what that means. If not... If not, hopefully we can convert you to be a beer geek. 
And that's why you're hopefully like sharing. Honestly, I think that's the the main uh, cool factor of a podcast like centered around like talking and beer is yeah. that I love beer people. They're always mm. pretty friendly. And of course, always, not everybody. Interesting Nobody too, in usually, any group right? is, is all one thing, but they're usually pretty interesting, friendly. Yeah. It's different than the wine connoisseur. Like the wine kind of connoisseur seems to attract a, a, a different kind of personality. You know, a little like bit. What kind? Uh, it seems like sometimes a little bit too like like into themselves yes. and their knowledge. Let me yeah. kiss your yes. butthole. Yes. Oh, uh, do you mind I if think... I analyze it? I, I, I get hazelnut and tennis the balls tam- on the nose. Oh, and the yeah. notes. Yes. Mm, oh. Use tampon you on the nose. You just finished all our mm. wine drinker listeners, well, by the way. Well, no, I love to, wine. To, <laughs> to be fair, there's a lot of beer drinkers that are, are like that, too. I know, I know. Mm, yes, I get a lot of fusel alcohols and phenolics. And that's, and and that's, actually, not, a, that's yeah. actually a vibe, too, because talking to people who don't drink beer, who were listening to the podcast, they were kind of like, isn't beer just beer? And I was like, you got to keep listening. Because well, yeah, yeah. That's, that's that's what I used to think until I got sure, into beer. Yeah. Which you, and um, that's true for a lot of things. And if I, you I are argue... drinking a wine, thanks. Just keep drinking that and enjoy. You know. I would I would argue, Luke. The reason you you find the beer crowd more uh, accessible for you is because it's just a broader range. Yeah. There's not. Like you can go all the way from it's like not as light, exclusive. Bud Light beer to yeah, a glass of basically like chocolate syrup that's fifteen percent alcohol. That's kind of what so we're doing. So you get a now. huge spectrum of flavors yeah. and tastes. And so you true. get a lot more diverse. Like some uh, people crowd. who wouldn't like the um, IPA from one kind of pale ale kind of uh, flavor profile might really enjoy the New England IPA juice bomb kind of thing, you know? I mean, I've I've had stouts that you taste like you're you're drinking out of like a demon skull, some type of demon blood or something. But I've also <laughs> Hell yeah. had like I've had strawberry cucumber, you know, yeah. farmhouse beers that it it tastes like a soda. You'd be like, there's no alcohol. In you this. might know this, this just... Johnny. What's the brewery in in, um, in Philadelphia? Um, maybe it starts with a T. Tired Hands, maybe. Yeah. Um, they make know. this crazy stout that's like called a milkshake stout or something. It's like a meal that beer. You know, yeah. I will enjoy that for what it is in small amounts, but basically, like, I don't like to have large amounts of it because it's just too sweet. It's too what, filling. What, what percentage type are we talking oh, about? Oh, probably here? like 12, 13, yeah. 14, you know? Yeah. Well, one of those. Not that in, you even taste done. the alcohol. It just, like, yeah. sneaks in under the. Well, that's like this. So So we're drinking Lagunitas Coffee Stout. Which is probably about um, 10%, right? Honestly, uh, I'm it, about to go on another beer balance? trip, so I'm going to bring back some crazy podcast fuel. I, Where are you going? Oh, you're going down south. I'm going down south yeah. and coming up the That's coast right. and Beautiful. stopping at a lot of breweries. Very exciting. Um, so we'll have some more exciting beer then. Stay tuned. This is very nice, though. But we decided to go the dark vibe. We got Brooklyn Brown Ale. Uh, what else? We got we also, uh, oh, the Three Philosophers. Oh, my gang. Three Philosophers and Southern Tier Chocolate Orange. That one I'm interested in. I've never had I'm it. I'm very interested in this. I, I have not had this one either. It's, it's basically a... Uh, <laughs> dessert beer with notes of chocolate and orange peel. So I'm figuring out what Joe really did well. here. He tricked that. He, he he's trying to throw a little trick. Did he, I beer genie you? Well, Is that what you're I, saying? He, he got four beers, but they're each like 12. <laughs> percent I see what Joe's trying to do. And and Luke texted me before, and he was like, "Do you have enough beer for us?" And my response was just big time. Yeah. So there's our beer. Um, let's get to it. Topic today. We sort of wanted to just tie the knot on the conspiracy we, thinking We had some topic. things to wrap up. Yeah. Yeah, certainly um, about conspiracy. So, Johnny, we kind of left off. You gave that, like, um, uh, angle of, like, advertising and, and the conspiracy of, like, just marketing. And, like, you, I think you gave a Steve Jobs quote. Well, yeah, but the, 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 the point of the quote was more, excuse me, that um, people attribute conspiracies to events and events to conspiracies much more like much more interchangeably than people think you look like you know one person looks at one thing and it's an obvious conspiracy when there's nothing there and another person can look at an obvious conspiracy and be like no that's just random events Mm. so so uh, they find patterns that aren't really patterns basically well they just pick out what part of whatever's in patterns there are and they go yeah that's it Right. They jump to that conspiracy. And I just thought that'd be a good uh, transition to getting into some actual specific uh, conspiracies. And, I see. And well, do you how... want to start with the real ones or, or the, the fake ones? Can I ones? just give a quote that if you didn't listen to part one, um, <laughs> I mean, 
do it or don't, I think it would it would make sense. Part one, we sort of delved more into the zoomed out like um, how, like conspiracy the thinking, kind of meta conspiracy. Very thinking, zoomed yeah. out, like you're right. talking about. Uh, to sum up, it's like a balance between skepticism and believing. You know, yeah, and, and, and to be one hundred percent of either one. And empiricism too, and actually looking at data, right? Sure. And analyzing data or like which is sort of the, the right? tool set of how to find a good balance between skepticism and uh, let's say what's the word? What's a good word, writer Joe, for believing everything? Uh, Craig. Gullible. Uh, gullible. Yeah, Gull- gullible is a pretty good one. N- naivety. Gull- gullibility. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Naivety. Yeah. I just wanted to give an sure. F. Scott Fitzgerald quote, which I think um, shows like how to toe that line pretty well. In he drank first... a lot too. Yeah, I know. That's why. Uh, I, I I don't know. That's it's it's appropriate. It's it's he's our friend because of that. He's a good writer. He's a great writer, actually. Wait, what's 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 um? I can't even think of something he wrote that's like standing out in my mind. The Great Gatsby. Oh yeah. fuck yeah. <laughs> Diamond as big as the Ritz. That's the one that I've actually <clears throat> taught because everybody's read Great Gatsby, but nobody's even heard of the Diamond as big as the Ritz. Which basically, if you like the Great Gatsby. Read the Diamond as Big as the Ritz, and if you haven't read the Great Gatsby, just read the Diamond as Big as the Ritz because it's basically a very condensed, uh, more entertaining version of the Great Gatsby, and it's it's just, sh- it's shorter, so it's fun to read. It's it's a novella. It's probably like 80, 90 pages. That's perfect. I could read that yeah. in a night. <laughs> no, you you can you can read in a day. Absolutely. Yeah. It's the it's the still pretty good, but not quite as great Gatsby. It's it's great. That, that's it's good. that's its subtitle. Yeah, actually. yeah, it's a long subtitle. <laughs> and it was actually written before the Great Gatsby, which is interesting too. So so the the uh, Fitzgerald quote is the test of a first rate intelligence is the ability to hold two opposed ideas in mind and still retain the ability to function. Yep. So it's sort of like contemplate two opposing ideas genuinely, and then you can, like, you know, go between both and not get stuck and sucked into one way or just lose your sanity. What an underrated skill set, though, today, right? Well, especially today in the era of, like, Trump and fake news, just I think the word is polarization, Right? Well, it, and it, it is true for either side. Any, well, the magnetic pull side, right? towards the left and yeah. the magnetic pull towards the right has never been, at least in my adult life, has never felt this strong. And, and I think there's other factors that go into that. I mean, you, you have now the situation where... Trump's the president. Well, that's the, <laughs> that's the main situation. But the proliferation of these extreme sort of non-negotiable viewpoints, right? which is perpetuated by the second they become non-negotiable yeah but it's because i think in a large part i mean i don't know if it's because of social media but it's propagated fueled by yeah exactly by because social media. social media almost seems to allow people to to otherize yeah. i know that's probably not a word otherize like, yeah. like people that they they wouldn't do it if they were in person like talking face to face but yeah. when you're making a, a facebook comment on something it seems easier for people to just be like, well, that's because you're a fucking idiot yeah. and you hate America. Like, Here, here's, a, here's a problem, too, which I think is really worth mentioning because it's something that I realized with the uh, last year's election in 2016. And it was something that I, I, I feel like I kind of knew and I feel like kind of everybody knew, but it didn't really hit home until after that election where everybody was like, how the fuck did Trump win? How did this happen? And it's this idea of social media bubbles. Right. And what happens is as soon as echo somebody, chambers, as soon as somebody says something on Facebook that you don't agree with, the instinct for people is to unfollow. defriend that person, block that person. Or and, you can unfollow without defriending them. Right. Yeah. So and they just you won't appear on. Yeah. Now, wait, you but don't that's even a problem. have problem. That's a, not only is that the problem, the Facebook algorithms that decide yeah. what shows up on your it works feed, into that. It yeah. does that automatically. Yeah. The things you like, yeah. the things you watch, the yeah. things you click feed into an algorithm that that it wants to the goal of facebook is to keep you on facebook for for more time right yeah. to get you to click get that like, app icon like, like, to, like. you ever notice facebook gives you random notifications where it'll be like so and so is going to an event near you that's like a yeah. bid it's why like why the a, fuck do i need to know that <laughs> it's a bid for your attention it's trying yeah. to say hey come use the app because when you're using right. the app you're looking yeah. at the advertisements and they can yeah. sell advertisements yeah. probably for more money if they can show the data that people are yeah. using the app for more time. Right. And and these uh, it's attention that is the currency. And again these bubbles it, you wind up with a situation where people say oh, I like I can't believe Wisconsin voted for for Trump. Like I have friends in Wisconsin and they all voted, you know, not for Trump and it's like, 
well, where do your friends live? Oh, in the one city in Wisconsin right. that voted blue? Of course. Have you been to the rest of Wisconsin? Yeah. Do you know have anybody you from the to rest them? of Wisconsin? Of course you do. Have you, you sat have. down and had tea but and, like, listened you, to their ideas? You <laughs> Nobody has, but you've bubbleized yourself. Yeah. And that's what, that's what you wind up with. Literally and virtually online. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. See, I, I don't... I don't go online. I don't do any social media. You're I, online I have, right now, buddy. Yeah, I see I, you online. Social media wise, though, I don't have like a feed. I check. I think I have. How a often Twitter do you go on Facebook, Facebook? Would you say? Uh, the actual the the messenger app I use a lot to talk to my friends and family, but the actual like Facebook page itself. Yeah. Uh, like twice a year, maybe. Really? And I don't believe yeah. that. I, I, I can just believe don't it. log into it. I don't have the app it's on my Johnny. phone, and I don't go to the website. <laughs> Touche. If anybody I, else said that, I'd be like, bullshit. But yeah, I'm like, I he's also, probably just staring at he, yeast He, he, he has day. been staunchly anti-grid for a while. Yeah, 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 yeah. he's I, generally I, someone who I can believe would live off the grid. Yeah. My cell phone screen broke once, and I just didn't have a cell phone for two and a half years. Which I remember because that right. was fucking infuriating. Where yeah, I, I couldn't and, get and actually, but it, it suited your personality better because you were just like, well, um, it worked. Yeah, try to find me. I don't know where I'll be. <laughs> people, it, the lack of access definitely made people more. Like you're more of a novelty. There's more. <laughs> he was mysterious. You show yeah. up somewhere, and someone's like, "Oh, hey, man, what what are you up to?" Because I have no way of voyeuristically keeping tabs on you. Right. I have to actually engage you to find out. But I think the it's more fun. problem <laughs> with those echo chambers you're talking about is because I see the effects in the real world. Because oh, oh, they're they're there. Is oh, I see. Yeah. Is because. It's mostly the wing nuts, that uncle that like you get in an argument with and is like telling your friends that they're like cucks or whatever the phrase is now. I think that's it. I, like, you I, know, I attacking your friend who's gay and calling them a sinner or whatever. It's like, why why are you yelling at my friends? What are you doing? And then you just block them and, and they're out of sight and out of mind. Right. Th- those people online, uh, uh, they, they're in the real world. And yeah. when you bring up a conversation, like try to have a real conversation, a political discussion, be like, Oh, taxation. Like, what's the government's role in our lives? Their commitment to us, us to them. It's a real conversation people should have and, uh, like, you know, work out, at least for themselves in a democracy. But you just yeah. you can't bring it up because, you know, some, some nut job is going to start talking about, like, abortion money well, or something. Well, it's going to trigger, a baby, like, like, a reaction in somebody. But it's fear of those wing nuts, and there's no way to cancel, to unfollow them in the real world. You have to actually yeah. deal with them face to face. And if the internet was just anonymous people like fucking with each other, whatever, that's fine. But it's it's these weird uh, ripples it has in the weird world. Yeah, there's the a disconnect. World, where right. certain topics are just taboo. Won't talk about them. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Uh, you totally. know what's funny? I I wrote this in in my notes app just as like a because I I realize like I censor myself quite often. Like yeah. I'll be in a situation Absolutely. and I just yeah. go. You know what? It's not worth, it's not worth it, it vocalizing yeah. my opinion. And I also thought, but it's because of the reaction. That. That's right? bullshit. Like, but it's because of the reaction. It's that because you... I just don't want to deal with yeah. maybe the the mental um, gymnastics of having to explain to somebody. Effort, I yeah. know you're going to think I'm a this kind of person because yeah. I have a this kind of an opinion. Or you're going to try to categorize I... me. Yeah, and I, I'm not a category. And how so can it's... I convince you not to categorize yeah. me? And and how you know it's it's so. Um, mentally tiring to do that yeah. that i just give up on it but that's, that's also yeah and what that that's known as the chilling effect which is uh is a bad thing it happens in all sorts of stuff you know it's why uh you know you can't shame people for coming out about attacks and stuff because then it has a chilling effect on other people yeah or you, you know it's, yeah. it's just it smart people who should be start starting these conversations yeah. or engaging in them when they happen uh, aren't because they're making that rational decision of this isn't worth my avoiding effort. conflict. Yeah, right. Because right, that's what yeah. a normal rational person does. It's the same reason. Like it's a unfortunate uh, thing. Like smart people have less kids because they plan it out. So there's less smart. Right. Right. Well, they're like, smart enough. And then not they to raise those kids, kids yeah. to be smarter and to be more Ooh. educated. And yeah, you know. The, so I wrote this in my those, phone yeah. about this topic. Um, I was writing about like echo chamber idea. Yeah. And I, I realized that, like, once something gets politicized, it becomes infinitely harder to talk about. Well, how do you define this, politicized? Though? Meaning it, it, it's been through, like, media or whatever. It's been shoved oh, into the, the just kind of a political spotlight. Now, yeah. And now the narrative surrounding right. that topic is, like, are you on team this or team yeah. that? Red or blue. Red or blue. Yeah. Literally, they have colors for it. That's crazy. Yeah, it's very, like, elementary, too. And then I realized that in politics, like, 
catchphrases come up which people grab onto so they don't have to like think through something themselves well that's what that's what killed i I mean you go back to 2016 and hillary and trump she relied on on the tradition a lot of the traditional. she didn't have a message but it was relying on a lot of the traditional catchphrases and he was just like yeah you know he was speaking his mind at least it's like that appealed to a lot of people who were like yeah i feel like you know i feel like what i feel as opposed to kind of these like I build ladders instead of walls. It's like, that means nothing to anybody. Right. That's just a bullshit right, metaphor. Right. Uh, it, it's see, like, Trump... oh, that played well on your analysis of, like, yeah. polling. Like, and he's just like, look. Talk on, to people on, like a real person, yeah. you know? You but know Trump what... has spent, he spent all the 80s and 90s, like, trying to get press for his businesses and his he's like, good casinos. At it. He's really good but, at it. But he remembers when it was, you had to, you know, have a publicist and call outlets and aid, try to get interviews. I don't know if he remembers to much of anything, actually. Well, <laughs> I'm just saying, though, now he's in a world he sees where, like, nobody wants the, the, the obvious incumbent. The other side had no options. And he's like, I I could just say something on the toilet and everyone will hear it. That makes yeah, my it's, job Yeah, it's a way pretty amazing easier. like thing, yeah. right? You're pooping and you could send out a tweet and amazing just, like, have – Start a war? It. That could That's start crazy. a war. It's or a the crazy the thing. No, yeah. no one human should have that uh, amount of power over the workings of the world. No one Trump should have that amount of power. Sir, I don't know if anybody <laughs> – Make it Obama, make it Clinton, make but, it Bush. But Trump's definitely at the top of Trump's the Trump's at the top of the list of, like, yeah. if you wanted to make an example of, like, why should one person not have why the ability... Why should we limit executive power? ...to ruin, yeah. you know, th- think back to the millions of years of evolution that all led yeah. to, like, smarter monkeys, like, having enough sex to, like, lead to human beings. Yeah. And then we figured out, we failed so much. So many people died so that we could be in 2017. We're making a fucking podcast. We're Skyping with somebody who's, like... A 12-hour drive away. It's ridiculous. We owe that to our past human beings to not fuck it up. The past dead monkeys. Anyways... To get back on track to the conspiracy I like, how, I like how you were raising your arms like a monkey. Button. I was. I was so that, <laughs> flinging that my fist in the air. To well, our next point of fractional banking. No. <laughs> Ideally. So um, I, I do think like the conspiracy thinking um, like sort of mindset is a big part of like the fake news and all of this like yeah. let's just call it muddy thinking that led to the insanity which was the 2016 election yeah because on one hand you had trump who's just i don't know if you would call him an insane person is he senile is he does he have dementia is he having strokes mini strokes all the time and then you had clinton who i you know not to get too political here but i just i did not like her as a candidate which is fair but a lot of people would argue with you well a lot of people would assume i'm a sexist just because i say i didn't like a candidate who was a woman, but like, that's obviously not my motivation at all. But if that's what you say about well, me, for I example, don't really care she what you was think. asked, um, "Hey, you used to oppose gay marriage, and now you're for it. Like, well, you know, explain that. Did you change your mind?" She didn't. She dodged the question. She yeah. gave a, a bullshit answer. It's like I would respect a person more who says, "Well, I used to." believe this and then i thought about it more or, or trump who just creates whatever he wants to believe well yeah but that's the that's the angle that turns out worked better than the oh it totally worked better because she can't she can't say i've never cared what gay people do but it was politically politically expedient for me to not yeah. comment on the it real until... answer was she but was going with the was political settled. wins and that's right. the real answer that i mean that you look at obama's record on something like gay marriage and that's that's what happened with him where he wanted to I was reading an interview about this recently where he wanted to act on that in his first term, like pretty, pretty early. Yeah. And they, but it wasn't politically favorable. Exactly, now, on one level, that which I makes can, sense. I can understand that that might be Well, they, a they tactic, talked to him about right? the long term and they, they were like, we'll get this. Yeah. Yeah. You know, eventually you give us and you, it is a democracy. You have to yeah. make laws go through a Congress yeah. and the Congress is um, at least I would hope voting somewhat based on their constituency and like what will it's, get them reelected. It, it's been better than a lot of the historical alternative. Yeah. It, it, it's not great. It's not the best, but it, it's something. There's there's way worse situations. And it's for like sure. turning an aircraft carrier around. It takes a long time for a, um, a bureaucracy of this size to like do things. How I long guess. does it take to turn an aircraft carrier around? I don't know. I imagine like did you see a the while, new one? A while. The, the USS Gerald Ford. <laughs> no. It's insane. Don't we have more has 90 aircraft planes carriers it. than... It has 90 planes, which is more than... I think mo- it's pronounced more planes Gerald. Than most, ...than most air forces of other countries. Yeah. All right, I'm going to get us back on the rails here. So Aircraft carriers are really useful. 
because <laughs> well it's on a, it's on a rail literally like <laughs> when the planes land they get grabbed by that's that like cable that's what i'm talking about <laughs> can we can we just start off to with tell the you. Big, can we start off with the main big conspiracy uh oh yeah fruit loops the system really man fruit. the system man no so you know there there's that hippie version of conspiracy thinking which you know leads to you know because i've met a lot of people on the left in more of like a a, a hippie type like stereotype where you know their conspiracies are are more like you know they 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 apply this organized like oppression to the system you know the one percent controlling everything there's a very specific order to it and they they see it as like a group of 10 people who are like deciding every feature of like what oh it's it's an actual room as opposed to seeing it more as like a natural outgrowth of well that was something i looked up though that i think was called the bilderberg meetings did you find that in your research no it's basically this meeting every year and it's of they oh oh yeah i've heard of this yeah i don't know who like well it's true the invite list but it's of the wealthiest most in power people and And they they try to get on the same page yep yeah and there's leaders and stuff they show that in house of cards season yeah there's no specific goal to this it's just oh let's all hang out and it's like okay that sounds pretty conspiratorial do they hang out in the woods is that where they like go camping they they had a charter back in the day that was about like just getting together the best minds or whatever and promoting uh, yeah. like the world, like what was best for the world and stuff. But I think they that that was Quote, years unquote. ago yeah. <laughs> yeah, when right. they first founded it. They said it publicly, but I think they you know were like, oh, we should just be low key about this, and that's what set people off. Uh, Alex Jones famously infiltrated a Bilderberg meeting where it just Are you serious? like yeah, and and like <laughs> the guy that went with him. Speaking of conspiracy theories, if you, you haven't to, heard of not, Alex not Jones, who, not who you want to be your mole at the the Bilderberg meetings, probably. right? Well, I think this was in the '90s or something before he really went went off the rails and he was an unknown. But uh, yeah. the guy that went with him, it was him and another dude. The guy was telling the story. I forget what podcast about how. They were at the same party, and Alex Jones was like, oh, my God, this is crazy. They're all here. Like, this is proof. We got proof. And the other guy's like, it kind of just looks like a cocktail party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, I'm not – they're just talking about mundane yeah. shit. There's no, like, secret right. codes or – like, so, it's, just, you, it's just a big party we crashed. Yeah, like, no you, blood you're, orgy, nothing. You're, free, you're freaking out because we're not supposed to be here. <laughs> well, Alex, Alex, Alex Jones. Jones freaks out about everything. Yeah. I mean, so to, to bring it back, like, the muddy thinking that, that – and fake news, like all that shit that helped Trump win. Alex Jones is at the forefront of that with like, he, oh, he has a conspiracy a for Alex everything. Jones. I mean, uh, Joe Rogan got yeah. Alex Jones kind of drunk on his podcast and he was talking about interdimensional child molesters. Like he, he he'll, he'll go, what, 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 I don't want to go into the details, <laughs> but this guy is like the prime example of like, we'll put a, a cons- link for Alex Jones in the no, description. No, no. We might put a link to this cause I found something funny. He was he was at the hearing for his um, like child custody thing. Oh, the divorce, yeah. And um, I guess he That's got cornered. Um, something he didn't know the the names of any of his kids' teachers or anything about their schooling. And the wife, ex wife rather, was trying to prove like this is why he shouldn't have kids. And under also old... see his listen to his show. Yeah. Yeah. Und- and also he's crazy. Yeah. So under oath, this guy said. Um, well, I, I couldn't really remember anything that day because I had a big bowl of chili for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> That's a special bowl of chili, ladies and gentlemen. No, and then, oh, I forget the exact wording, it, it but he was like, he, he, he was like, it was a big old bowl of chili. And like, <laughs> somebody like followed up, they go, um, like, well, you didn't have a memory because of chili. He goes, have you ever had a big bowl of chili? Like, it knocks you down. You <laughs> yeah, know? I'd be like, I, I don't know. I haven't thought about it. It, it hasn't you come need, up until now. I don't know that. It sounds like he needs medical attention for some other disorder. <laughs> oh, he definitely, well, he needs, definitely needs at least like yeah. um, a, a therapy screening of some kind. He needs assistance, well, guidance, I, I've, maybe. I, I've been. Can, can I just lay out my basis for conspiratorial thinking quick? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. A quick little two minute thing. So I've been reading on the Enlightenment a lot lately, and uh, it, about where the idea of America was coming from. Oh, that's good and stuff. And basically yeah. they were looking at Europe, which had a bunch of dictators, not a lot of stability. Uh, like control was too concentrated and then not concentrated at all. It was just chaos and then tyranny and it, it didn't really work. So they knew that the you had to have a ruling class 
to or, organize things, but you got to bring the populace along. Otherwise, you will just inherently it's abuse. unstable and it will be temporary. Yeah. If well, you, you will yeah. abuse your power, and, and you, you want to bring they, in the best of the best, right? Right, and you yeah, and you don't want shit. Yeah, you want a meritocracy so stuff improves and things right. work. But you also uh, you know you don't want shit to get burned down every hundred years because the masses are getting yeah, it. Same reason why the UN but, was created. But they never really wanted every single person to have a voice. Like that's terrifying, right. I'm sure, to the founding fathers. People forget that the House of Representatives was the people's house, and senators were actually appointed by the House of Representatives. Uh-huh. I'm pretty sure. So you actually didn't vote for senators. You might until be setting the 20th yourself up century, for a thunk correction. Uh, no, you, senators used to be appointed. They weren't elected. That, I forget what amendment it was, but okay. uh, and the idea was that you know the populace votes for crazy shit, and then the senators are much smaller appointed. You know, people that actually know how hold the power and know how things work get together and figure out what's possible. Oh, they're real upset about this, so we need to address it. We can't just ignore it. Or this is crazy. It's right. not going to happen. It's better than the it, system it, just collapsing. Right. And so, but there was always that idea of friction between the classes. And if you let them work together and communicate and have a free press to report on the rulers, like it just made things move better. The parts move better. And the last, you know, America's richest country in the world. They didn't. I don't know if they saw that coming uh, as part of the oh, plan. Well, but... How many things do you imagine they didn't see coming? You know, like right. But but think, of the, say, think of the population submarines. itself. Like, what was the population uh, when America was founded? Three million. Yeah, now it's three hundred and thirty million. Yeah. yeah, it's like, like at least that's 100 insane. Times, yeah. You know, yeah. And and it's just it's the, a different ball game. The different money, game. The, the, yeah. the money, the power, all the wealth has gone to a uh, you know a small group of people. And you might not be able to point to specific signs of them exploiting or like planning a giant organized conspiracy where they get together. But you can just look around and see it's skewed and uh, people feel things that don't get addressed. It's just the, the parts aren't working the way they should. So it's that feeling of I'm getting fucked over and I need a reason to make this to, to settle this cognitive dissonance. So, yeah, I think right. that's where when you, you got to look at everything historically in my mind. And that's where uh, I think. So you're, you're basically mindset. saying that like back then, like things were, were simpler and, and easier to digest. And now it's just so, so much information. There's too much. And it's, it was slower. Too, it was just though. there was there was right. less there was just less to do. Yeah. You know? yeah. The, right. the government's job was just to to maintain. Well, lo- three million peace. people, like that's nothing. Th- that's what that's like one county. You know. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I mean, there are cities. Think with about how many big like a county people, government yeah. is. Pick a random place. You know, obviously in a city it's going to be more, but yeah. you know, even that it's like if you look point. at the the governmental Entire structure cities, of right? a New York City, it's not like. It's not like un understandably big, you know. Yeah. But when you think about the whole country and like, you know, this is what I, I think people don't get is that things are so complicated that that there is no silver bullet that just fixes everything. People talk politically and they act like, yeah. Oh, I've just got the them answer. All out. Well, they'll say things like, just kick them all out or just let them all in. You know, yeah. let's say that's like two opposing viewpoints. If you were to set up. By the way, that's one of the uh, uh, um, logical fallacies is to set up a false dichotomy. Yeah, or just know? absolutes. But let's say you think like um, kick all the immigrants out versus let them all in, like open borders. It's like, well, neither one of those turns out to work, right? Because, you know, you you don't have a country without borders, but you also don't have a country with closed borders, you know? Right. And and so there, there's obviously a middle ground of like a certain amount of porous – borders but like not too much that like security is so like i just don't see enough people like realizing that hey the world is very very complicated and i need to just take a deep breath and like like settle down a little bit and and try to navigate this ship in in less of an emotional way and and just try to think a little bit more and we're dealing with something so complicated that you can't have a simple solution but to actually it. look at the evidence and the analysis of that evidence, and trust right? the experts of because you need experts well you don't get that though you, you know in a lot of this thinking right well in in the 2016 election and in the fake news muddy thinking it, it seemed to all be like surrounding around distrust experts right and so yeah, once well, you start doing that it's like you realize how slippery this all is like if yeah. people stop believing like what the New York Times publishes, then it's like, well, well, where do right. I get my news from? Right. If the New York Times publishes a headline that says we started a war with North Korea, 
And then you tell me like, no, that's fake news, dude. And I'm like, what well, is it fake news? And then I like check my other source and like that says it's fake news. But then another one says it's real news. It's like, turns out I can't know what's happening for real, but for the news that I check, you know? Yeah. And this is why it's so important to be able to distinguish between bullshit, what's, what's legitimate and what's just yeah. noise. And there's a lot of noise. So I wrote this down worse. in the uh, in the notes for part two here. The Carl Sagan, amazing, you know. Good guy. Great guy, great friend. Yeah. Johnny, I believe you have a nice uh, Carl Sagan voice, right? The planets. <laughs> I good. like how he sounds like Carl the Sagan, planets. like, banged Kermit the Frog and yeah. that came out. Yeah. Um, it's pretty much uh, Kermit the Frog, but you have one of those fancy like cigarette holder things that Cruella Deville has at the corner of your mouth. I was gonna say that's well, the I, trick to Carl Sagan. I was gonna say yeah, it, in the cosmos, it's not easy being green, right? In so, the cosmos. That's pretty good. I'm yeah. impressed. No, that's pretty right. good. So he had um, this thing called like, well, I mean, I think he called it a baloney detection kit, and other people have like used that phrasing before too in the skeptic community. He meant bullshit. He was just a gentleman. Yeah. I, well, that's what I love about the era of, like, Carl Sagan. Like, yeah. he, he's, like, the kind of person that wouldn't say the word bullshit, but instead say baloney. Baloney. You know? And it, it, he was, a, like, from the, the, the things I've heard him speak, and, like, he seemed like a kind person, too, you know? Uh, just yeah, but he was, the, <laughs> yeah, he, he was, yeah. he was so nice on the... Yeah. He was so nice and Kermity. Yeah. <laughs> so smooth and Kermity. <laughs> but he was a government shill, because he didn't think there were... He publicly said there weren't aliens out there. He didn't think... That was well, like, that was he like, said <laughs> he didn't think there were, that, but... That was like the podcast... Yeah, pod- so he's being paid to say that. That was like the obviously. podcast with, with uh, on, on... I think it was Joe Rogan with Neil deGrasse Tyson, and that guy was asking Neil deGrasse Tyson, like, well, what about this? And then he was like... I'm if not I, authorized to tell yeah, you. Yeah, he's like, if I had a beer yeah. with Neil deGrasse Tyson, he would he would be like, yeah, aliens are what's up. And mm-hmm. Neil deGrasse Tyson's just like shaking his head like, yeah, he's no, like, that's no. not what I would say. Even he's if, like, I'll tell you what I'm even saying. Even if I now. had a beer, like, that's not what would change in this conversation. So I'll read a quote from, um, this is a chapter in a Carl Sagan book that was called this Baloney Detection Kit. It's sort of like, um, like Skeptic's Guide 101. I'm going to post a few website yeah. links to different skeptic websites, like the few that I follow. I like them a lot. I, I don't like them in, in some ways, but they're really good at, like, if you find yourself in a storm of bullshit, mm. coming back to these yeah. skeptic 101 principles can help you sift through it. Yeah, navigate. So this is the Carl Sagan quote. Like all tools, the baloney detection kit can be misused, applied out of context, mm. or even employed as a rote alternative to thinking. But applied judiciously... It can make all the difference in the world, not least in evaluating our own arguments before we present them to others. Beautiful. That's the part I love. Yeah. So it's That's like, great. take the skeptic movement, the skeptic baloney detection kit, the whatever you want to call it. That can be misused to get off the balance we were talking about earlier. And all of a sudden, now you're too skeptical. You're not believing anything. Right. Yeah. And so his point is like, that's a personal thing. Don't use that to attack a bunch of other people. You know, you can use it for other people, but but mostly use it on yourself before you open yeah. your mouth and make noises with your mouth. Your mouth hole. Make those noises in your own mind and put it through the baloney detection kit and say, am I fooling myself? Do I have a cognitive bias about right. this? I think self-assessment is the key. Right? Self-assessment. And you can't just do it once. You have to continually come back to that. Always. And yeah. that's what the social media thing is. It to, to come back to that, it's like people much more easily make noises on social media than they would in person in real life. Yeah. Some of it's a, the it's anonymous a, it's a to do that. factor, yeah. right? Absolutely, but some of yeah. it's just like it's easier to type and then like be done with and, it. And then be like, I'm already in bed eating a sandwich right. anyways. You know? Like if you if you read through YouTube comments especially. I love YouTube people comments. Just, they're so they're, So like this term trolling, right? I like trolling. It's like, fun. you know, I, I've met so many people who like I would troll them in – um in like reality you know like i would purposely like say something that no like the way you do to me joe like when you're i I don't know what you're talking about already you're trolling me right now (laughs) so i would troll certain people and they they would not realize that that's what i'm doing yeah which is what the key of trolling yeah Yeah. (laughs) i troll people whenever possible well, so, like, Absolutely. there's a way to do it, and, like, in person, there's a way to do it you have a smirk on your face yeah. a little bit, yeah. and it's sort of um, tongue-in-cheek, right? You're like, yeah. eh, 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 like, 
But on a, on a YouTube comment, somebody will give... I can read the sarcasm through the text. Well, that's the difference, though. But some people, people don't, and then they react yeah. to it. Well, that was like... I think I, I told you uh, a couple of weeks ago, there was a great video that one of my friends posted online, and it was a list of the Paris Treaty Agreement countries that signed and countries that didn't sign. Yeah. And the countries that signed was every country, and the countries that didn't sign was just America. US, yeah. And in the comments, I just wrote, uh, you know, this is ridiculous. I mean... What what nonsense! Paris isn't even on that list of countries. Right, right. And, and somebody freaked out, right? A couple of people yeah. freaked out, and then I and then they were like, "Oh, that's ridiculous!" What you said, and I was like, "I know, I'm outraged as you are." <laughs> and it just kind of devolved from there. And then eventually, somebody was just like, "Ha ha!" And it was, of I, course, I do it with happening. like even more trivial things. Like yeah. I had an old friend that um, we were spending like a, a Sunday uh, afternoon kind of brunch vibe. Um, and we saw this like specific type of grass growing outside and they were like really proud to be like, do you know, actually that's in the onion family. And if you like picked up the grass at the bottom is this little bulb Mm. and you can actually eat it. It tastes like an onion. And I didn't know that. I was like, wow. It also tastes like pesticides. But now the whole rest of the day, I was noticing that grass everywhere. And I would just do this every time I saw it, I would say, um, oh, wow, look at that grass. It almost looks like it's an onion. And they would be like, it is an onion. I told you this already, you know? And I'm like, you didn't get what I'm doing? Like, like for some reason, it's just the same with, like, politics. They wouldn't understand that, like, I'm just being funny. I'm messing. It was actually onion grass? They weren't trolling you? No, it was actually onion grass, yeah. (laughs) Because that would be the perfect thing to do. No, no, yeah. (laughs) How do you know they weren't trolling you? How do you know it was Uh, really onion grass? Because it was. I, like, I think I bit into it or something, yeah. Wait, you actually... (laughs) I looked it up on Google too. Really? My, yeah. We yeah we did that upstate once. We picked all those yeah. garlic ramps. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Ramps. Yeah. Um, my favorite troll I ever did. I'm still friends with the guy. He's some. Uh, he's he's kind of kind of a meathead dude, and uh, we were talking about we're all something. meatheads, Johnny. Talking. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> we were talking about uh, like, I don't know. He said, someone said something about a gay guy, and he got real uncomfortable. So I was like. Oh, you're. Are, how do you know you're not gay? And he's like, I know I'm not fucking gay, man. You know how like yeah, macho yeah. people yeah. freak out like that? Probably because like, they like uh, dream uh, of dicks at night and they don't want right. to like so, believe it all the time. So, <laughs> yeah. so I was like, right. Oh, have you have you tried it out? You know for sure. He goes, no, man. Blah, blah blah. I was like, So you've never thought of a man that way, even just to to see. You've never run no, the well, thought experiment, yeah. Like, yeah. right? And that's what I was saying. And he's like, No, what are you fucking gay? You're saying you think about it. I was like, I kissed a guy once. I I didn't like it. it was, I wasn't. Well, he kissed me, but it didn't do anything for me. <laughs> yeah, my penis. So did nothing. There was no penal yeah, activity. It was like so. so now moved. I know. <laughs> it shifted. But, but I was like, but I know for sure. If and, and he's like, oh no, right. that makes you gay. And I was like, I have a girlfriend. You don't, and this and that. And it's like, like one of the I'm reasons you gay. don't have a girlfriend is probably your insecurity. But Johnny, that's a really good point because this it is was, a, this is exactly so good. This is exactly what we're talking about though. Where like a lot of people they think in absolutes and it's something like that, right? Yeah. It's a spectrum. He, it's like I'm like ninety five percent not gay yeah like i'm definitely yeah. he, like he i would never angry. bang a dude but like people rather think in absolutes and be like oh i like i could never find a man yeah. attractive I, I can find a man attractive doesn't mean i want to bang him i don't know if that's an evolutionary thing or not but like yeah i've met certain men who are just so like um defensive yeah. like even when they when like they're around um like a gay guy yeah. you can see this level of like uncomfortableness like arise in them but is that like an insecurity what i get that? along with gay guys really well like yeah of like, course they're fun you they're, know yeah i mean they're 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 just as diverse as any other i was other gonna say people. some of them are like, assholes yeah, just some like of them are really everybody cool yeah, yeah it's but fine. i just well, mean I, like i've never had that reaction of being uncomfortable no, like no uh, and wonder, maybe that's just a, when they try to a way i was raised that i appreciate but you know I, I sometimes wonder if it's also since we're in a a more accepting time for that uh, yeah. That well, that's fair. He, they don't have to be the secretive and like you know another yeah. man you if you open up and he thinks you're gay he might get a, gu- a bunch of guys together to beat the shit out of you or so. like that was a real problem for a long time. Sure. So it's just the straight the straight man is 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 a possible threat yeah. more than they would be to another straight but it, man. But again, it, com- so, it comes back to people like to think in absolutes, right? Because yeah. that's that's what makes them comfortable. I mean, and, and you can look at any. You, you can look at so many different categories of that, right? You you can look at, like, religion or spirituality where people really don't actually, uh, or not people, but a lot of people don't actually really deeply think about these things, and they just 
they go to the extremes where it's just, you know, oh, yeah, you know, God snapped his fingers, everything was created. This is how well, I feel comfortable with reality. it's almost like reality. they never just went, they never went into that, like, you know, they never unpacked that well, cause it's model. Well, because it's easy to not do that, right? It is. Um, You're told this well, is how it is, and that makes me feel comfortable with the fact that I'm going to die one day. I mean, but that's a that's a Luke theory. Like I always like somehow trace everything back to like people's fear of death. You know. Oh, I think that was that a Freud. Lot there. Was that Freud that he traced everything to either like that and like baby penises, or like something. sex and yeah. like some your relationship with your mom or something, right? Yeah. Like uh. I get it because like there are certain things that are like so deep down in like the structure of our being, like yeah, evolutionary. Like babies right? are um um. Like, all babies, like, overwhelmingly, I think all, if you show a picture of a snake, they freak out. I, I was going to say, I can't wait to hear the end of that sentence. Whereas if you show a picture of, like, a dog, like, they'll be like, meh, 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 meh. you know, some yeah. babies freak out at dogs, some babies cuddle with dogs. But, but, but that's show because a snake. the shape of a snake, the babies who weren't afraid of the shape of a snake, right. yeah, yeah. got we're, eaten we're, by we're, snakes. We're getting, we're getting off the rails all right, let's get to into some evolutionary conspiracies. biology. I don't know what to tell you. I feel, I'm having a great time. Yeah. So, um. <laughs> it's great. It's great. But we always end up with evolutionary biology. Yeah, you so how, far, cool. how far are we into this? What are we? 50, 50 minutes 50. In, yeah. So let's get into some conspiracies because... Um, All right, I got some for you. No, no, Did you know American <laughs> Airlines God. is owned by Long John Silver's restaurants, so you don't take boats anymore. That's right. So uh, what accent is that, Johnny? <laughs> uh, just generic southern uh, uh, insultingly southern accent. Because there's so many different types of southern accents. Belgian waffles aren't actually Belgian or waffles. What are they? Well, they won't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> the they won't tell you angle. Well, wait. Well, so can we you, start with you... UFOs? Yeah, well, we already yeah. know that those are true, so we can just go on to the next one. Yeah, though. so we're doing the real ones first? Let's do the real well, ones. Well, it's yeah, okay. December of 2017. Well, you know UFOs and, are real. I, uh, I've seen them. Today's the 19th. St- we'll link to this in the show notes, yeah. but no, they're real. Um, as I was like thinking about which conspiracies to talk about, like fake ones and real ones, mm-hmm. um, a New York Times article came out two days ago yeah. about um, a Pentagon program where um, actually started by Harry Reid, like... He, he was, like, the main senator that funded this. What the fuck? And, and it was a UFO investigation, like, like it, it, Department of Defense. Like, it was something like, I'm forgetting the numbers. Click the article in the show notes if you want to know the, the details. It was, it was like 13 million, million the, right? Tw- I thought it was 22 out of the 600 billion. 22 million out of the 600 yeah that sounds right 22 and million away and, and it was it was hidden yeah. in mm. you know like a lot of secretive programs you know is hidden behind uh, enough um what do they call it um classified you know oh, barriers yeah that we Redactions don't actions and that it, type it of just shit. gets put under yeah. this category of like defense department classified whatever but but they were researching like a bunch of um you know, Air Force and Navy pilots that saw mysterious moving lights yeah, and all these sure. things. And it's like, again, I saw myself, like, if I clicked a bunch of links and started getting into it, I saw that I could start to believe it, you know? Right. Well, when or, it's or true, it's easy to start to Or at least I could start to, start to be to convinced yeah. more and more. Sure. And so one of the main ideas here is, like, I'm not against researching anything, yeah. right? Right. Um, although... You do have a limited budget as a country, and and maybe you know putting more research into more immediate problems that are are real, like like proved more like global warming. Well, well or... UFOs don't need to be something that needs to be researched. Well, I don't know. Like the idea would be. Um, at, from a defense perspective, they're always like. Oh, it's like the Russians are up to some shit, right? Yeah. It, well, it could be anything. Yeah. So in that sense, that makes sense. But if you're researching it because you think it might be aliens, if the aliens can get here and they want to fuck us up, yeah. we're screwed. Yeah, yeah. Like that, you're, of you're, course, yeah. No amount of research That's... or R and D is going to stop that. It's this is an independent. My day. first thought when I read this, because like the UFO stories are always like um, some kind of hovering light, mm. and always they seem to say that there's um, they show a, f- a, a a flight pattern that doesn't see seem to sync up with anything we know that flies right mm-hmm. but then i also think you can buy a drone at walmart like what do you mean like how yeah. do you know you're in an f-16 so you saw some like crazy lights like maybe you were tired yeah. maybe um 
you know, somebody taped, like, some giant flashlight to a drone. Like, I don't know. But also, like, why does it, why does it even matter? Because it's kind of, Neil deGrasse Tyson points this out where if, if aliens are smart enough to get to our solar system. Are they just going to fuck with us and, like, well, they flash put, some lights and, like, you, you put get to dildos the point up a farmer's butt? You know? Well, you get to the point where you're so smart that we're probably, like, how ants are to us. And you might not even, right. you, you wouldn't even know. That's notice. why I thought maybe UFOs so are just like alien teenagers just going on a joyride. Right, exactly. <laughs> but that's like a legitimate, I mean legitimate, quote unquote, but it it doesn't matter is my point. It yeah, doesn't it's sort change of like, anything. Well, it doesn't well, solve anything. What it doesn't next? prove anything. You know? let's, exactly. hold, hold on, before we dive in, let's just, there's a few options with the mainstream aliens, the UFO theories. Yeah. Either, let's branch it off there either are ufos or there aren't well right? no no it, and then, ufos it depends how you define ufo well so you yeah again Ali- ufo aliens. no 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 well, because that, this no, is no, the no, bullshit but that's ufo no, means I'm, unidentified I'm gonna, flying I'm, object I'm, go- I'm gonna get to that hold on <laughs> okay all right so go. you have you have either it's a ufo or it's not a ufo and then you have either it's an alien ufo or it's yeah some secret military science okay. shit okay and then you have either it's an alien ufo studying us and, you know, just like animals and just probing our asses and whatever. <laughs> I love how uh, they always probe the asses. Yeah, of course. Because like, that's what we would don't do. Don't probe the brains. Don't, like, yeah. look into their yeah, eyes we, we and their ears canals down saw, below. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a special on TV the other day where they duct taped a helmet onto a rhino <laughs> and airlifted him on a helicopter by hog tied him and airlifted him. What? And I was like, all right, that's some alien abduction shit. Wait, who did, who this? did this? What are you saying? <laughs> some, some animal. There's, like, one of the last three or four rhinos that are left and so they were like airlifting it to oh, like, this place to a, a safe special place procedure or something no they had to give it a rhino surgery rhino plastic yeah. <laughs> no, some sort of surgery a rhino but, nose but job just, when i saw it to that rhino if it woke up for, like they gave it the hood so it didn't freak out but it was anest- anesthetized but yeah. if it woke up and just looked around it was like holy fuck aliens abducted me like i'm just flowing through the well, air well that's now. what happened I'm to it sure. right? yeah they yeah. put something through my ear that like why why are they but putting for the fact that ri- rhinos probably don't think, um make podcasts that, yeah. and talk about what happened to them yeah well, or, or even know them? that you know a lot of things they're probably just like yeah. wait do they make cow noises <laughs> yeah, yeah totally <laughs> yeah no that's, that, so, uh, that's a good but, wait but, johnny so, okay th- what so you noise does a rhino make no, you, you, you nailed it. I nailed it? Pretty good. Right. That was a female rhino, though. I don't know. I can't do a good male rhino. <laughs> uh, so you can do you a You either have, elephant. they're aliens, they're either, like, benev- they're either just indifferent aliens studying yeah, us. Yeah, right. Or they're evil aliens, and they're, like, lizard people controlling us. Or, I highly doubt I love how they're always better, lizard people. Hold on. Or they're a federation type, like, Star Trek Federation, where they're, like, benevolent, and they want to share with us, but not till we're ready. So... Based on those alien theories, is how you think how you interpret these stories. You think the government is hiding shit from us because they're being controlled by the aliens and they're just gonna like eat eat us one day or something? Like yeah. they're breeding us up to eat us, or you think well the like we keep failing the test for entry. They like they won't. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're oh, not ready. You guys, you so guys have to get test- your shit. Well, together why do they have- test farmers? Then. <laughs> up their ass. Why don't they abduct Elon Musk and hey, see what yeah. he has to say? And not probe hey, him man. in his butt. Yeah. Just just because some drunk farmer decides to fuck a sheep in his field, does that mean all humans are out there sheep fucking? Kind of. No, it, you know, there's always some bad eggs in any pot. Hey, Johnny, like, remember a sure, quote yeah, of mine from like many years ago? I said, at, or maybe it was yours, I forget, but it was that, um, you know, coming from like an Irish sort of Scottish background, oh, at least Rebus? one of your relatives was a goat fucker. No, at least one yeah. of your direct uh descendants or or De- i mean ascendants uh, ascendants what do you call well, that ancestors well, well and it makes sense because at some point you know the wife was sick with like uh ancient disease husband got horny and the sheep and Betsy the, was there and the <laughs> was right there <laughs> <laughs> all right so maybe that's what's going on with aliens is they're so bored like the teenagers they they go through right. space time aliens. and they're like, when, when, hey, what do you want to do tonight? Yeah. Let's get wasted on like space beer and like butts, probe dude. some humans up their butts. Like uh, it's like cow tipping. Cow it aliens. could be like yeah. cow tipping, yeah. Like like yeah. aliens coming and like abducting a farmer and like playing with it is like our version of cow tipping or like right. taking a baseball bat to a mailbox or something. It's just like how do you kill the time of like puberty? Alien they just don't take alien a, puberty. A baseball bat to our or who planet. knows. Maybe intergalactically, our colons are actually f- pretty impressive evolutionarily, and they want to document it. Well, there's, Who knows? there's more Who bacteria knows? in your you colon See? than there are. Well, I forget this stat, but there. 
There's some shit. Somewhere else. There's definitely yeah. some shit. Yeah, in the it's, colon. It's but, definitely the environment where that kind of bacteria thrives in. What shit? And maybe I don't know. I think I I I think the the um the principle this is in the baloney detection kit the principle of Occam's razor applies here. It's like you have a mysterious event. I mean the fucking thing is called UFO unidentified. So you're admitting yeah. I don't know what it is, but then every alien person says because it's a UFO unidentified, I'm going to say what it is. Yeah. It's a this. It's an alien. But now you're trapped within that framework, and that's the problem. And you've trapped yourself you, within you, that you framework. You can't think objectively at that point. You know what? And, and people do, credibility people do the concerned. same thing with ghosts, because I think people, and, and talking about ghosts, it sort of fits in um, with the same muddy thinking well, mindset. Well, that we have much more proof well, of. Well, they, they, have, <laughs> they <laughs> have an event that happens where it's like, oh, like the bookshelf just knocked over and like, what the fuck was that? I don't know what it was. Hashtag and ghost. then they say dot, 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 ghost. They yeah. always but, jump but just, from a just no, run, unknown to a known. Yeah. Just because you run down the line, there's a difference. You can run down this line of thinking. It's whether or not it's people are susceptible to believing it. Uh, you, you even started off saying being able to hold two opposing views and not lose your mind. These are just people that lose their minds that fall down the rabbit hole. Right, right, right. But, but it just... just Entertaining. That's a good See, way to put it. This is what I don't like. This is where the stigma of you know you're a crank if you talk or know anything about conspiracy theories comes from, like because because it's people you know that those are the vocal people that go down that hole. Yeah. But I like to think these thought experiments through. What if yeah, yeah. aliens? I came? appreciate what that. If, what if yeah, what if aliens? Wait, want Johnny us? has an alien on his shirt. Look, and and a I Sasquatch. Did. Oh I my do. god! Did you do that yeah. on purpose, bro? No. And it's no, just, just like they. Shirt. That's all it says That's on an the amazing shirt. shirt. Is they. Johnny, can we put yeah. a picture of this shirt like somewhere in the blog post yeah, where we embed this podcast? Yeah, I'll get a good pic and yeah. send it to you guys. Uh, one thing, um, one thing I wanted to say shirt. too, though, along those lines, Johnny, is, is something that me and Luke were talking about the other day, <laughs> which is, and I think this really speaks to the conspiratorial mind, and it's this, uh, the fact that if you look at something like you, you can kind of look at these individual conspiracies, and a perfect example is looking at something like the. Um, UFO theory, right? Yeah. And then look at something like the moon landing theory. And UFO, Compare it. UFO theory is based purely on anecdotal evidence. Witness testimony, eyewitness testimony. Which One of we, the least reliable things know, in the court of law. Speaking of baloney, yeah, in the court of law, right? You and can the, say bullshit here, Joe. You don't have to say baloney. Baloney shit. And, but Bologna. what's ironic about that is that those same people look at the moon landing and say, Psh, come on, moon landing? Really? But not only do you have anecdotal evidence from the people who actually fucking went there and built the rockets, oh, you that's have a really good point. Better evidence because you have actual point. fucking pictures too. So the and, and so rock. what Joe's but, saying is the evidence that the UFO people rely on, the anecdotal evidence, yeah. is the same evidence they throw out. They throw out because they want to believe we didn't go to the moon. Which also has better evidence in addition to that. Yeah. And they choose. That's to throw a really that out. good point. I had never thought about that. This idea that like but that, that goes e- back to this to be, mindset. To be a, a skeptic is to apply like logic so much mm-hmm. so that you're like, how could that be true? It well, could be that, all these other that's things. That's the quote unquote premise of it, right? Yeah. yeah. Now to be a believer in every conspiracy yeah. um, would be that okay. So it's not fun to believe that. We planned to go to the moon. We figured out how to do it. We built the rockets, and we went. I think it's fun That's, to do. Well, I think it's fun, yeah. but for some people, it's less fun than just believing that a bunch of people covered up some crazy conspiracy. And that we talked about that in the last episode. That's a cognitive idea. dissonance right yeah, there. And it's like, wow. well, this explains why my life's so shit, because these people are but, controlling it. Yeah. yeah. But if both are true, there's the theory that both are true, that we did go to the moon and the government filmed a fake one just in case the astronauts I know, and that's even horribly. more plausible than... I think that's much more plausible. But if that's, yeah. if that's more plausible, then why are all the other theories since the moon landing that the government has pulled shady shit just out of hand dismissed. Oh, I don't think they are. Well, so they I are. think the point I'm trying to make is I do not like the angle of the skeptics community that that dismisses. The, um, there's a very beautiful well, and creative there, right? energy in the conspiratorial mind. Yeah. They're 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 very flexible, right? They're searching for connections, yeah. which and is then a good thing. The problem yeah. is once they make a connection that they like. They seem to not be able to let go of it, right? Yeah, right? So it's like the beautiful part of that energy is like being open and flexible and and being ready to see the world as this way crazier thing than like it seems to be in normal reality, right? 
Right. The problem is they decide it, and then when new information comes colliding with that it, decision, it that they framework. don't they don't change their yeah. mind. Well, no, it has to fit within that. And that's what I'm saying. Once yeah. they like seal the framework, it's yeah. like they sign yeah. the contract of like, okay, I believe in this conspiracy. Yeah. Now everything that hits against it, it's like you put your shields up on the Death Star, you know? Yeah. Oh, you're gonna try to come at me with that? Well, this. Yeah, and and so yeah. and then the more years you have of being yeah. uh, this conspiracy Just theorist, deeper entrenched. Your armor is yeah. getting thicker because. Yeah. Everything yeah. that an opponent might say, some of which is actual bullshit, some of which is truth cutting through your theory, right. all of it you've prepared a response for so that, boom, it bounces off, boom, it bounces yeah. off. And nothing they can say can ever get you to think they might have a point. Well, that came up uh, many podcast betas ago, which I think, Johnny, you mentioned this, this idea of a great question to ask at the beginning of any oh, debate yeah. Yeah. is... What, what evidence would I have to present to you for you to change your mind? Yeah. And if the answer is there is no m amount yeah. of evidence, it doesn't exist, then the conversation is over before it's I'll begun, be honest. Right? You said that in, in um, you know, when we were first doing the, like, trial yeah. Skype podcast things. And I wrote it down in my phone because I so wanted good. to remember it. Yeah. It's like because I was having a, a, a problem with somebody I knew who, like, got very, very political after the election. And... I would have these increasingly like difficult interactions. And so I started thinking to myself, like, how can I get out of these? How can I find out if they're hopeless from the beginning? Right. Or if they're worth putting in the effort? Which is a good question. Because like I genuinely want to learn and I'm open to change my mind. At least I want to think I am. Of yeah. course, I'm the same bias-filled thing as anything else. But that's a good else. place to start. That's a healthier place but to start. But that question is such a good place to start because yeah. it's like, okay, this is the question that cuts through everything and shows me, am I about to waste my time or not? So if you ask a question to anybody and say, like, okay, what evidence could I possibly bring in a perfect world that would change your mind? If they say none, right? You're then, done. Okay, have a nice day. Yeah, Like it's what? Over. What is the point of a conversation but for the fact you're going to, like, negotiate and possibly exchange information and change part of who you are. Well, and, and in order to be bettered by it, right? Hypothetically. Yeah. I mean, some people will, will do that because they want to see the world burn. Yeah. Like the Joker and Batman. You or know, they just want to win. His interactions are just about like Burning manipulation money. and yeah. like just seeing the world burn like yeah. for the sake of it. Like this resentment of being kind of thing. Like we, a we, Columbine shooter. And that's, and that's a vibe, but you know... We can't all do that. So, Johnny, I totally get your angle. And if you were to, if Johnny, if you or I were to have this same conversation about conspiracies five years ago, I'd probably be at your throat and you, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I was way more on the skeptical side of things, like, you know, when I was like 20 to 24. I was much more on the conspiracy side of things. Right. But, but we both I, sort of some... had like a, a lower resolution version of like our are because like you were like oh like it could be anything and i was like no it has to be this one way you know it, it was actually it was more me being like why am i getting so upset about this stuff and i realized i just right. wasn't happy with my own life <laughs> so i started changing things in my right. personal life and it turned out i was like well it's interesting but like i I can't ultimately change it. Even if I do figure it out and I do figure out the truth and I'm that one guy on the internet or maybe one out of a few thousand that knows, like, it doesn't help me at all. Right. Like, it you make still me have feel to like go to the same job, whatever it is. Right. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't, I haven't become a better person. I haven't developed or experienced anything that like, I, you know, I was just like, this is not a good place for yeah. my energy. So, and then after that, I'll, you know, after a while you cool down, a lot of them do seem kind of silly. I remember but, we, uh, we would be like wasted and like, you would just sort of do the what we were saying in the earlier episode, like character Joe, like when Joe pretends to like be a conspiracy theorist. And like I would fall right into the trap, you know? And then the more I started to like be like, you know, well actually like, you know, uh, the rockets were this big because this is how much fuel it takes to do this and get into lower you know, whatever I I was saying, you would get more like inclined to fuck with me more, you know? Yeah, it's funny. like a cycle that fed into itself. Yeah. It, uh, but then at but some point when we're like throwing empty beer cans at each other, we're like, wait, what are we doing? Well, that's what I mean. That's You have to have these conversations and discussions to work it out. And if you're too scared because it's too toxic and everyone's minds are made up already, 
um, yeah, it's a problem. Yeah. And it's like, what better way to cut through that problem than my, my, to say, what my, would it take to change your mind? Yeah. My favorite version of that is, uh, I, ha- I have some very religious friends. I'm not ter- very religious at all. And I, uh, I like to debate with them. Yeah. Uh, and they like it too. Cause they're, you know, well, because like, oh, yeah, knowing I'm, you, I'm, you probably do yeah. it in a, a cool way. You're like, you're showing that I, you're genuinely curious stuff, yeah. about what they, you know, whatever. My fi- my favorite one is to say, okay, what if God is real and I br- produce him? Like I figure out a way to contact him and he meets you and he says, yeah, I'm God, but I, I didn't I, I didn't make you. Or like, you know, I, I'm just way older than you. Uh, I fucked around a few thousand years ago, but yeah, you guys just evolved and all that's totally real. But I, I'm also here. Um, yeah. All right then. Like, what would you do then? And uh, that always th- throws it for a loop, or, or or things like that. If they can entertain a question like that, then they've ultimately answered that. That because it's aggressive to say what can't for practical purposes to be like. What p- evidence could I give to convince you? Because if they knew it already, then they would they, have thought about be, it. Right. It's a little. But you could you could pose one like that, or like, what if God was real and He said He made you, but He like that's it. He just made the watch and it's running like, right he's not controlling like he, things he he's didn't not he didn't think of it like you. some beautiful warm loving thing he was just like hey let me see what this is yeah it's like you ever make a birdhouse like earth's a birdhouse it's pretty nice but uh, <laughs> it's just sitting there like if you guys fuck it up that's i'm not gonna save you you start launching dudes, the monkey birdhouse yeah that's the whole free will thing guys like uh, i'm not running it anymore it's, it's, yeah. interesting um, so yeah. so it's not even like um when i say um uh, uh, what evidence would change your mind? That's almost the wrong question. It's not name the evidence. It's saying what you're really asking is, are you someone who in the face of reasonable evidence would change your mind? Yeah, that's it's the not, core of the question. So it's not your ability to say what would change your mind because right. maybe it's this unknown that you can't even picture. Like, Joe, what would change your mind about gravity? Like, yeah. you'd ha- you, you know, you could answer it, but it's like hard for you to say. But if you, if you at least admit, I'd be willing to change my mind about it. Let's talk about gravity. Yeah, I L- mean. Let's do it. That's actually too technical even because it's like, what is gravity? Oh, by far. But <laughs> I would be willing to Let's just say like, um, you know, some other life principle you live by. Like, you know, what would it take like, for you to change your mind on that? It's like, well, it depends on the thing, right? Yeah. If you told me like I, I should do 10 jumping jacks every morning, otherwise I'll have a stroke at 40. I'll change my mind on that. Like, if everybody seems to do that, I'll just believe it. I don't know how blood works. <laughs> or jumping jacks. <laughs> or jumping jacks. Yeah. But, like, if you tell me I have to, like, find a baby and murder it every year if I want to keep living, I'm going to be like, well, I'm going to change my mind much more slowly on that yeah, and sure. figure out what's going on because that's yeah. a weird... I'm going to need more That's evidence. a weird medical I'm advice. Need slightly a lot more evidence. <laughs> yeah. And you need another semen sample, doctor? Like... <laughs> that's, like, three today. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Um, uh, should we, is, is there, uh, uh fuck. Would, so, um, can we just, <laughs> if we, we we've, if we don't get to the, would you rather and whatever, I think we should just like button up the conspiracy angle. We, we, cause wait, we, we, we didn't give a real one yet. Can we, I, I wrote down a list, but can we at least give like Let's do one. the credit to the conspiracy thinking of like, at the time people were like, Oh, I have this crazy theory about this. And then it was true. Oh, there, there were a few of those. Plenty of those, right? Yeah. Johnny, what's your favorite? I know you've... Uh, my favorite... Uh, or just like the one that you think proves the point the best, that, you know, some conspiracies are true, are, could be true and you don't know which but, ones but are which. But you got to think through it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a good one is the USS Maine, because... Wait, is that the time travel ship? No, no, no. That I ship think that was also traveled? called. Yeah, that might have also been Montauk a USS. Right now. <laughs> that that might serious. have also been a USS Maine, but this one was in the 1800s. Oh. Uh, it's the one that blew up off the coast of Cuba. Oh and kinda, yeah. And then Hearst, uh, William Randolph Hearst went on like a yellow journalist push of nationalism and stuff. And then Trump got the papers. Elected. And yeah, and then they invaded. And whatever. That's how we got uh, Puerto Rico, Guam, Philippines, and a bunch of Spanish people died. That. Yeah, we're living there. Um, <laughs> and uh, but so one of the theories is that because the, they they don't they think that the ship might have just blown up. It might have been an accident. Uh, but some people think it was a false flag, which is when you plan an attack that is made to look like one group did it when you really did it to yourself. Or, right. That's a well. That's, that's what a nine eleven conspiracy would be, right? That, right. A false flag. We wanted to go to war in the yeah. Middle East, so we planned and attack that was that was the thing too in the 60s with cuba where the cia actually i think i wrote in it in our notes was operation northwoods 
which was oh a... let's do that one yeah yeah go on. that no that did you know about this john you know the cia yeah. seems yeah. to be behind a lot of the no, ones that was, turned was, out to be real it was real. an actual plan to like blow up ships with cuban refugees and crash planes into buildings and shit and they were like yeah this could get the public on our well, side to justify invading cuba which yeah. korea went have we done korea? that like i don't know <laughs> The Korean War wasn't great, <laughs> especially Joe after gave World me conspiracy face. <laughs> Hard. Vietnam, Vietnam was was uh, expanding, and it was a nightmare domestically. And so there wasn't the push to invade Cuba the way right. uh, the intelligence uh, community wanted to. They, they did not want a communist country 90 miles from America. Like, right. We had the whole Western Hemisphere locked down all of a sudden. You know, Russia famously sent missiles to Cuba, and everyone freaked the fuck out. Right. right. So they had a lot of interest in crazy, right? Yeah. In it's trying, like a game of trying risk. to do. Wait, if, you risk the, if, risk if you think that if you think Cuba was a piece on risk, yeah. yeah. With nukes, though, because if you think that <laughs> the nukes, world yeah. might end, if you don't like, even if you think you're a moral person, I have to lie to my own people and kill some Americans to save everyone else. Like, there's a way to morally justify of that. Of course, to there yourself. is. That's the famous that, trolley experiment type shit. You know? Yeah. It's like yeah, and, you, there, there's a way that the logic can justify, you know, well, a thousand people have to die so that three hundred and Twenty million can live. It's like, all right, well, or three hundred thousand. Where do you draw that line? To be president is right. to be someone in a high enough position of power to have to, to make McDonald's crazy all day decisions and like that. Nukes, yeah. But the crazy thing is to be in that position of power would mean you have to have like such a grasp on your own sense of morality and your philosophy towards life. Well, ideally, to deal with the level, like I never have to deal with that kind of responsibility in my life. Ideally, that's a different ball game, you know. And to think we have someone like Trump, that's a... Well, hold on. Let's stop. Let's let's get back on the rails and just go through this, the Northwoods thing. Because yeah. this this that's turned out one. to be r- real documents. They, they yeah. didn't do it. Uh, JFK uh, did, uh, did not approve But they the were plan. talking about it. But they, one of the, the ideas was to hijack a commercial jetliner. Uh, oh, I part of it one. was they actually they made it seem make it seem to be filled with Americans. So they probably would, you know, make up people or whatever Well, because they're not going to kill um, americans if they don't have to it, it, right i mean they will if they it. have to well but the they, idea was to cr- you know. crash it into a populated area right to cause uh national because and they were looking towards historical incidents such as right, yeah. the uss maine and there's precedent it, for that yeah specifically with cuba so right. you know so it, it kind of yeah. made sense to pull that trick again uh which when they you see documents of that, it leads more credence to the USS Maine theory then. But doesn't it and also lead more and more cons- credence to 9/11 too? And also because what happened right after 9/11, we went to Afghanistan yeah. where the, the Taliban was hiding, but we also made a totally other country, thousand miles away, uh, called Iraq, and like a lot of companies made a lot of money off of it. So that's where people go, oh wait, there's some cognitive dissonance here of. How, wait, why we got attacked by these yeah. guys, so we went and killed those other people too? What? But don't don't you feel like that's a fair uh, conspiracy in the sense of yeah, like you can draw these connections historically with the U.S. government, where yeah, they've they've done some really shady fucking shit, and even the the stuff that they haven't done, they've thought about it, and now this happens and it follows that pattern. You know, we may never have enough conclusive evidence to know that. Of course, that's ridiculous. That's not the case. But why wouldn't you dig down that rabbit hole is my point. Like, I wouldn't go into that saying like, oh, yeah, 9-11 inside job. Absolutely. 100%. How do I prove this to people? But, hey, these are questions that I feel like are okay to to, to ask, right? Yeah, I, to- I think so. Well, I think um, I think they should. Because like the 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 nine eleven conspiracy goes all the way to you know there there were demolition like explosives planted in the building and I mean who knows stuff again it seems like what happened was a bunch of people conspired to crash a bunch of planes into some buildings right but and that's what happened so it's a conspiracy in that sense for sure hands down the next question is well what more do we know beyond that right. Yeah, and that's where people get nuts, where they start course, being yeah. like, you know, Bin Laden was were, was like was a CIA yeah. agent. Bin Laden used to pl- shoot when he ducks did the attacks. With George and Bush. It's like, what? It's like that's a possibility, right. but it's 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 not the Occam's razor. It's not the, yeah. the simplest explanation, yeah. the one that requires the least amount of like mental acrobatic, like you know. So you, you want to keep open to this? 
You, well, so it's it's again. This is why off. I think um, the funny thing is, <laughs> the, the thinking back because I I was driving back from the airport yesterday and I yesterday and I listened to our part one. Nice. And now, like, we're getting to the yeah. close of part two. I realize we kind of did it backwards. Like, part two was sort of like the layer one of conspiracies, whereas like yeah, the layer two that right. we did was our first episode. Which like, is fine. Because because I think like at the I'm at the worried. at the core of this is like that that balance of the mind. You know, yeah. it's finding that that um, I believe last time I was drunk and wiggling, right? Oh, you were wavy, wacky, inflatable tube banding. Yeah. Um, Finding that zone in the so middle. So it's like we Absolutely. kind of like uh, traced from the surface of, of take it, UFOs or but like that's fine. CIA I mean, things. if that's how you go about it, this is how we get well, to Well, I, I, I guess I'm saying I, I came about it from the inside out, whereas like... Yeah, I see what you're saying. Like the right. uh, you can go from the outside in yeah. if you have the tools of science on your side. So you can sift through well, each... assuming that science is real. ...decision and the what is at the basis of science... I would say Faith. is editability, right? Man, you're not you're not biting onto any of the chum <laughs> I'm throwing out for you, man. So I've I've developed this like immune system when Joe like <laughs> pretends to be a conspiracy theorist. I just it bounces right off me. Yeah, I know your your shield is solid, which is a problem that you mentioned earlier. Just for the record, FYI. What? <laughs> So on to our next segment. Um, so any any closing thoughts on conspiracies, like? Um, I, I feel pretty satisfied, I think. Uh, we can we can list them in the show notes. There yeah. are a bunch more that I was going to talk about. There yeah. was a CIA mind control one that ended up being that, totally yeah. true. There's one called yeah. MK Ultra, which was the FBI trying to infiltrate and like 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 you know destroy. We could do a we, we can we can get to a part three next time something crazy happens <laughs> another UFO sighting. We don't have to hit all of them. Yeah, we could do a part yeah, three. Yeah, true. I eventually, mean, eventually, part three. Eventually, so some of them part three, might be fun to go good. into, like Absolutely, just like yeah. singularly. But yeah, the point yeah. is, there is a bunch of real ones, and so you there can't be one hundred percent skeptical. You can't be one hundred percent gullible. Yeah. You have to find a balance and yeah. um, and think, and think, and and it's mostly thinking. And and if you want to avoid an and argument, drinking. well, that's the other part with someone. It's as easy as asking them, would you change your mind in the face of the right evidence? That's the question. Start, start Remember there. before yeah. we were asking, like, what evidence yeah. would it take? To... No, no, it's not about the evidence itself. No. It's... Could you imagine evidence it's that about, would it's change about your the mind? ability to do it. Yes. Yeah. Um, does that sum it up pretty well? Can we get to, the, like, some genie action? Yeah, I'm ready for some genie yeah, sure. action. So the other thing I noticed listening back to our episodes was, for some reason, Johnny, I always just, like, freak out and, like, intro your... Would you rather? Not only do you intro, <laughs> but as Johnny pointed out in the last episode, you kind of trail off into just. I just freak out about mumbling. the whole concept of genies. That's a whole like. It, because your mortal mind can't handle it. You can't process it, it, what's happening. I think it's more Luke in his mind has like an intro. Like, oh, I got, I'll have like a cool little intro, and then like John will take Johnny will take his cue and start talking, and it's like, but we didn't work. But then I, out. I go on a rant <laughs> about so genies. I, yeah, and I, I don't know. I, I'm like, oh, should I? Okay, yeah. And like w- once you start trailing off, I'm like, okay, I'll jump in. I yeah. think that's like an Arabic word in origin, like genie. So, yeah, to, to uh, what? Gaijins or whatever. Well, I mean, the Gai- origin Gai-gin? of genie is from like Middle yeah, Eastern like know. religious folklore. To to do what? To... No, that, that, so, the character of a genie. I'm saying. You're, oh. you're doing it again, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, take it away, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you have a Johnny genie for us? I I do, but uh, yeah. Just uh, to explain, a genie is not the Disney model of a genie most people think. Oh, not uh, even close. The, the, mytholo- <laughs> yeah. the mythological genie. It's not genie. Robin Williams in a blue fat cartoon. No, is yeah. Johnny willing to murder us or let us well, play out his Johnny, games? were you going to say like what they were in like folklore? Yeah, tradi- traditionally they were, uh, you know, kind of trickstery demons, right. sort of so more. So demons, that's important. To, yeah, trickster, kind of trickstery demons. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, it. They really, they. It's like the monkey's paw type thing. You, they grant wishes, but there's a curse. There's a twist. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. To, yeah. To, to to either punish you or to fuck with you, because. Uh, but you're that, laughing the whole thing. time but either way. They're not here. It's to sort help of like you. they're the salesman just... that if they can get you to sign a certain contract, as soon as you sign it, 
like they're they're they laugh they're like oh, yes you, i tricked you yeah. like you don't realize that you'll become a millionaire but then i get to eat your soul yeah or or <laughs> eat all your fingers and it's like yeah that was well, weird so well that is a th- that's a that's a good warning though because you know it People sell their soul all the time. You know, sell your soul for a job to make a lot of money, and then you're not happy and you kill yourself. Probably wasn't a good idea to take that job. Or even worse than that, you're not happy you know, and a... like you make someone else's life miserable. Maybe you, yeah. you take it out on your wife. Maybe you take it out on your wife and kids. Like yeah, as opposed to pay it forward, you're taking it backward. Yeah, no, I agree. There's a lot of ways yeah. to sell your soul to a genie, so yeah. to speak. Yeah, but, which but is why folklore yeah. exists in the first place because I think we invent this shit. To like put stories to, to into our culture us, though, of like, right? hey, here are the yeah. pitfalls you want to avoid if you can. Yeah, yeah, you, know? you got to keep an eye on these because look out for genies. They they happen. All right, a so lot. we have a genie here. We have a resident. So genie. I'm more of a here just to entertain. Come up with some entertaining questions, genie. So I got a would you rather? <laughs> he, just, pose. he just wants to have a good time. He's I'm just trying to have a good genie time. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna propose a scenario where you're forced forced into two choices. And you you have to pick one because it's a thought experiment. And if well, you don't, no, it, then it's worse. Yeah, don't no. Don't try to game. Don't try to game the system or figure out a way where will I get the money and I don't get my foot cut off. No, you're gonna lose <laughs> no, the money. I, I believe last foot. time he warned us that you'll be, I love, you'll be thrown in a bag with a snake and a dog and crushed crushed. I also love how the genie yeah, when he's going. saying like you know giving an example just off the cuff he's like you know you don't get all the money and you lose your foot. It's like it's like he's got these like yeah. dualities already planned out. It's like oh, he's ready, either yeah. you get a thousand dollars. Or you lose yeah, your no, he he's he's planned it. Because in in the genie's mind, he's not a demon. He's imagine you're immortal. Third person. Ima- <laughs> imagine if you're immortal. You're I don't have to imagine. Oh, oh no, if you're immortal, immortal oh, yeah. and you live forever, you're not omnipotent, but you you just you live forever, and you have you know some. I think it's omnipotent. Knowledge. Okay, <laughs> um, but you, you know you're you're you have that going for you, but um. You know, and you're surrounded by these mortals that constantly are just dying and shit. Maybe you were nice to them for a while, but you know, after a while, you're just gonna lose your 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 moral like center, and you're just gonna start fucking with them to have fun. Yeah. Um. So yeah, of course, a genie at some point has cut some feet off or something. You know, they've just seen everything. Yeah. So that's why they're just detached. Very vampire like in that way. Yeah. It's just kind of a right. yeah, yeah, just a boredom sort of thing. Yeah. It's that eternity, um, that facing eternity issue. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's why the funny thing is people are scared of death, and then like. Thinking of like immortality, I think would be more terrifying. That's a good question. Another episode. <laughs> uh, so, anyways. Uh, All right. So, what's this I week's? Got, would you this rather? This week's is: Would you rather find out for certain that there are aliens, that there's alien life comparable to ours in the universe? You don't know where, but you know for sure. When you say comparable, and... you mean intelligent. Yeah, there's like okay. intelligent life out there. They may be too. They're probably too you. far away yeah. for us to contact. But oh, I see. So yeah. you're just finding out that they yeah. exist. You're not finding out like because they yes. came here or anything. Yeah. Yeah. You know, let's just say random wormhole opens just long enough for you to random for us wormhole because the genie didn't. What am I like that? taking a little like jog around the moon and the wormhole opens? No, no. I mean, it's it's like it, it's the whole space jog. Like the, no, the whole you decide like this happens to the planet. This is what's going to happen to Earth. Everyone finds out. We we find out. Oh, as, as a, species. a species, I see. We find out. You're that, in contact uh, with CNN. You'll figure it out. He'll right. genie CNN. Yeah. <laughs> and or, uh, you find out for certain we are the most advanced life. And if there is anything out there, it's just little single cell stuff or just amino acids oh. floating around. So like most like, of life is just most, bacteria, and we're yeah, we're we the crazy the branch advanced. of that. Now, one question Ooh. is how how can you. Like, we can assume that right now, but we, we have to say we don't know. Are you yeah. saying, like, somehow, how does the human human species, like, figure out an unknown like that? Like, because we can't look at every part of the Oh, he's going to tell you. Oh, what don't you understand yeah, about um, that? I don't know why you still ask questions like this. <laughs> um, we we have a qu- we invent a quantum scanner, and it scans everything ever in all he the He didn't just make it happen because, because he's a no, genie. He invented it because he's a genie. <laughs> <laughs> That's the difference, Luke. Now Johnny's got a camera. Try to game I, he's, such a, he's more scary of a genie, like, on camera. Wait, wait, he is more scary. Especially because he doesn't just snap his fingers and it happens. He's like, I'm a genie and I'm bored. I'm going to actually make it because I have unlimited time to do that. And that's what he did to us. 
When you play a video game where you're playing like a Farmville game, you're going to just cheat and get all the crops. That's boring. <laughs> Even though you could just go outside and do, grow real crops. Reality so to like, us and everything that matters in our lives and our relationships is just his version of Farmville, by the way. Right. Why would, I che- why would I cheat at that? Why, I wouldn't, you wouldn't be playing yeah. it. I'd be go doing it myself if I, I yeah. you know. I would like to think that there's uh, a lot more life a lot like us, I think. I, I like think, that. I think there's something... It's more interesting, right? I imagine Come just on. like, because I can emotionally connect to this scenario more. I imagine, let's say somebody brought me to the wilderness somewhere like in Canada where there's like no other humans around. Uh, no, like in this scenario where you live in a cabin in the middle of nowhere, no other humans around for like 100 miles in all directions, woods, mountains. You're at the edge. Wherever and that and is, I yeah. have to live there for a year. I'm, I'm given the skill set to do that. I have, like, freezers of food. Like, I know I'm going to survive. Yeah. But I just want to imagine the feeling of that. Yeah. There would be something so, like, I don't know the word, but, you know, it's that same feeling I get when I imagine, like, this tiny blue dot floating in infinity, you know? But what, what of, is... Like, if we're alone, you know? But is that a positive emotion to you? Or... What I'm saying is if I found another cabin in that random yeah, wilderness, right. I would grab onto that emotionally and be like, okay, that exists. Like, there's another person who lives in these woods. I'm going to go uh, on a hike tomorrow and say hello. And then right. you talk and you sort of just get to know. And now all of a sudden you feel a sense of, like, yeah. something. I can't put the put my find the word well, but it's, it's a sense of community well community yeah, but it's it's deeper reason, than community it's like more emotional like i feel it as like but a, i think it's like purpose right it, yeah it's a, a this... sort of um responsibility yeah because if it's exactly, just me yeah. then fuck it that's you know like right yeah let's like go tip some alien <laughs> and there's something and beautiful columns. about that like deep in the human psychology it's like like if it was just you if you're just tom hanks in castaway and you know that's Great that's movie. it like um yeah. I feel like that would fuck you up. Like, what what kept Tom Hanks going was getting home, you know, in he, Castaway. Even when that becomes a delusion, because he's so... Sure. He becomes the island, right, basically. Well, he settles in hardcore. Yeah. But he's still always well, wanting to go home. It's always that glimmer of... Yeah. There is a home. Possibility. There is a, a life that is something that I, I want to try to reach. Now, I'm not right? saying if the universe was empty of life that... that you know, we still have 7 billion humans. No, have... I would still get wasted and eat sandwiches. But if you just collapse humanity into one thing, it's sort of, like, <sighs> bittersweet to think that, like, yeah. like everything else is chaos and randomness and, like... like That's what we are also. Planets with nothing more than bacterial life or something. I w- it just feels lonely, you know? Yeah. So I, I don't know if... if humanity could handle that i mean i guess so many people are religious that like that's irrelevant well people will will believe whatever they want to believe i know i know it's i know it's possible personally that there's no other life in the universe i know it's possible there's like dolphins on planets or whatever (laughs) like just swimming they're really smart but they don't have hands and they don't make burger kings and taco bells and shit like that because why would they i'm pretty sure taco bell only exists here by the way they might be a burger king level technology you know yeah, it's weird. All I can express is, like, when I imagine being on a spaceship, like, on a trip to Mars, yeah. let's say, and I imagine sitting behind the window and looking out and seeing space, yeah. I emotionally freak out. I remember I had a panic yeah, attack once at the beach because I, like, my mind connected like it was sunset. I was seeing stars come out. I saw the space station go over, and I just sort of freaked out at being, like, a nothingness in, a, in yeah. an infinity. And um, that's not a, a nice feeling. No. So I would be worried if about that. Yeah, I would. I would go. I, I, I would go. I want to find out about about other life. I'm pretty firm on other intelligent life. Pretty firm. Damn, genie, deep. Uh, yeah, that was heavy, man. Deep. Uh, that wasn't even rather. like you were trying to like dick us over. That was like you were just trying to get us to really kind of reflect internally on so that next week he can be like right leg or left leg (laughs) oh he's gonna come back hard don't you worry he's gonna come back hard and heavy but that's good i like that one is there some genie trick we're not spotting here i don't think so well because i 
I actually know the answer, but I, I want to see what you what the monkeys right. prefer. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> He's not going to tell us. He's I'm just seeing what you oh, would that'd rather be entertaining, find out. Right? But, no, of yeah, course. Right? You're going to you let us the... die wondering. <laughs> yeah, I'll see what the next ones th- come up with. Oh, you know, I, I don't want to ruin yeah, the game. We, ha- we can't forget in like the version where he's a genie, he's just going to go to the next Skype call and like fuck with two more monkeys. He has the time. No, but I really think yeah, I'd right? rather find out that there's other life. I, I agree. Because um, yeah. there's something so um, like precious and de- almost depressing about the fact that that um well i think bittersweet well, was to, the perfect way to put it precious is the yeah bittersweet yeah. precious is the wrong word because it is really precious if you if you think that in the whole rest of the observable universe um there's no life at all then it's like the fact that matter happened to um coalesce into be like hey what's proteins up? and then organize yeah. into cells and then multicellular things and evolve all the way to intelligent monkeys um, making a podcast talking over the internet, which way even more intelligent and monkeys like figured out how to, it. how to how to how to do. Um, that's a really cool thing, right? Yeah, that's, <laughs> this is the the whole th- the whole thought experiment thing. Oh, uh, one more. I have one more note since we we finished. Would you rather about uh, space news? I just read that uh, some barley got sent to the ISS by Budweiser, and it just got there, and they're going to test germination and microgravity and shit. And uh, they're going to send it back down and study it. And ultimately, they're going to make beer with it. And they said that they're, it's their goal to work with, uh, or um, I forget with whoever, but it's their goal to uh, make the first beer brewed on Mars. Like that's a, really? a, a goal of the company, a corporate goal now. It's like, yeah, when your whole shtick is marketing because your beer sucks, that's a really like good thing. Well, well, fuck you, we're on Mars first. Like that's. I mean, I badass. would buy that just for that fact alone. You know? Right, just for the moment that someone cracks the first beer on Mars, I, I, I would crack a Bud Light at the same time. That just, just for continuity of the species and all that. But uh, I just thought that was really cool that, you know, of course humans need to bring beer to space with them. Well, I mean, we we maybe like a future version of humanity will look back on like our stage of like space right now and space travel and like exploration. And, you know, it'll be the same way we, we learn about Christopher Columbus in school, you know, he right. sailed the, the ocean blue. It's like they sailed the space black you know, well, in, in, well, in, <laughs> in 21, in the 1400s, 22. they were pretty much just like open or even think about like when the Mediterranean, it was a big deal to cross it back in the ancient times because you were just in a big open wooden tub. Like they didn't have cabins and stuff. Yeah. The boats were just open and you were just floating out there. Right. And it was like, so I think that's where we are now. We're in like, you know, 1600s. We're just starting to figure out that, or, or we're starting 1400s. to like dip our, you know, like get, to figure get out further we, and further and be more confident in doing it like in a way that's economically feasible. Well, I would say right now we're just not even, we're not even there yet. We're just figuring out how to design better sales. We haven't mass produced any of them or made any of them yet, but like, we're just like, Oh, well maybe if we redesign the ship and make it broader here or there, we can add some sales. Oh wow. We, we don't sink like six out of the 10 times now. It's only three out of the 10. That's awesome. So I think we're at that stage still uh, in exploration, as opposed to now with just metal boats that talk to each other, <clears throat> computers. Right. That's true. Are you ready for a uh, fact Yeah, we're fiction? at like 135, so we can finish here in a second. Um, I could I could do the fact or fiction. Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. I mean. Oh, okay. I don't even have a science Hit me fact. with it, baby. Oh, you don't? No. Okay. Uh, we've covered enough yeah. science, quote unquote, I think today. Uh, so this is an interesting one, Luke, um, because I know how much you hate when I say that. No, no, it's not you saying it's an interesting one that I hate. It's when you said, um, this is in fact really interesting. You say the word in fact, as if to like trick me into thinking it's a fact. In in fact. But this whole segment, game, whatever is fact or fiction. It's like Joe says something that like is supposed to trick us into being like, is this actually a fact or is it I don't think calling bullshit? I don't think you're going to get it this week. I, I, well, I, I didn't get it Joe? last week, so yeah. Joe, can, yeah. Joe, can, I, can I just say fact? Uh, you, you're, you're just guessing. You're, you're pulling on your genie strength right now. Last week had to do with Blockbuster yeah. and yeah. which state has the most Blockbusters. I was so close. You, Johnny, oh. jo- Johnny so genie close. knew. Johnny well, genie I, I blew knows. it. 
I blew it last week. Because <laughs> of your mortal All right, what's life. this week's? What's this week's? So, all, all right, right a couple of things. First of all, spiders. Hate spiders. <laughs> I, I agree. I am... You, you will not meet anybody more anti-spider than me. They bite me in my sleep. They can go die. I, I, I hate them. I'm, I'm really not a fan. If they're outside of my house, I can deal with them. But they come into my space, you know, all bets are off. So I hate spiders. That, that's really racist if you replace the spiders with any other <laughs> like group of people. That sounds really Honestly, bad. that I'm might okay. be uh, a, ne- deep, a deeper... Co- Anyways, I don't... Nevertheless. <laughs> nevertheless. Um, spiders, you know, whatever. So the fact is, spiders, whatever, you know. <laughs> Listen. Yeah. I got the suck. best spiders. Don't you worry. Um, so it turns out that spiders, <laughs> Johnny Dirty, <laughs> it turns out that spiders eat so much percent of their body weight that if all spiders in the world, the entire world population of spiders, decided. Today. By the way, I think there are like 30,000 species of spiders. Interesting that you say that because I have a fact to, as a hint, to oh. help you following that. And you're not far off. So if spiders today decided, you know what? We're going to just eat humans for the next year. It would take them exactly one year to eat all That's of That's the humanity. fact or fiction? Well. It's the fact. <laughs> so as for your, your point that you actually just raised, there are in fact approximately 40,000 species of spiders now johnny you know what i'm thinking first off this is not the kind of number you can like sort of like you think to yourself like like if you said how many times uh does a human pee in their lifetime i would think well i do it like seven times a day that's you know 49 times a week that's like this many times times i would do the math that way but like how do you do that kind of math (laughs) with spiders right (laughs) oh (laughs) I don't even know. I think that sums it up. I don't even know where to start with that. I th- I think um, Skype just got jammed up because yeah, of that question up. I yeah. asked Johnny. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, What's it's cutting out a little. Um, <laughs> oh man. It's just Genie so, powers right So are around. you, Genie? <laughs> uh, I think it's just net neutrality is finally ending. I hope we're live during it. That'd be awesome. <laughs> We might have to start doing that, actually. I think it All just right, so happened. my point we, is we I have no problems. way to know how many spiders exist on Earth, which well, is 40, like... 40,000. There's one species of human. What is the actual number of species of There's spiders? one species of human and 7 billion humans. There's 40,000 species of spiders, though. And how many... I'll tell you what. I'll give you another hint. They eat 10% of their body weight daily. But that's okay. not... What do we eat percent of our body weight daily? Not 10%. What is it, though? Yeah, that, I would be eating 20 pounds of food a day. Yeah, it's, 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 it's literally equates to 20 pounds of <laughs> that meat. That would be like having like a full chicken three yeah. times. No, it's an insane, <laughs> it's an ate, insane amount. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine if you ate uh, 34 half-pound burgers in a day. Like, no, it would, be, it would be like eating like 80 quarter-pounder burgers a day. Yeah, 80 quarter-pounder burgers a day. So you're saying they a eat a remarkable Every amount day. of mm-hmm. their body weight. Yeah. So I have a question. This yeah. is a fact or fiction. Yes. Can a fact within the fact or fiction be true or okay, false? Okay, so it's it's specifically what I said. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, see, <laughs> I think you, you I gave think uh, you gave you gave a premise to this whole thing, which was okay, spiders I'll, I'll, can eat ten okay. percent of their body weight okay, in a I'll, day. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll say the fact again, or will I? That because it could just be a logic puzzle where it's like no, I, I'm, the premise I'm just was say the false. Fact. Therefore, this well, is well. Here's here's the Ugh. fact that if every spider on planet Earth today decided we're gonna stop eating what we normally eat and start eating humans, it would take them exactly a year to eat all of humanity. Well, false because we wouldn't just let them do it. Well, uh, okay, time out. Uh, not on a logistical level, but on a... Just the you, mathematics of yes. their ability to eat. If you eat. piled up 7 billion people and threw all, sprinkled every spider <laughs> ever on it, yeah, they, it would take them a year to eat it. Is that what you're saying, Jeff? Exactly. No, Mr. no, but... Thank you for clearing that up, Mr. Genie. That was actually well, highly useful. I've done this one a couple of times. So, uh, yeah. He's actually it's done this experiment. One. Oh, God. I'm terrified. <laughs> Okay, uh, so, you should make that a consequence of somebody not answering one of your would you rather's eventually. You'll wind up on the spider pile of Joe, humanity. I'm noticing a pattern here, yeah. which is your factor fictions are usually like 
pulling me in two directions like equally, you know? Yeah. Because th- it really comes down to this. What you said yeah. to my non-spider expert brain <laughs> sounds reasonable. Yeah. I know more than spiders than like, you know, Fred down the street or something, you know? There is a Fred down the street. I know, yes. Yeah, <laughs> How true. do you know what he knows about spiders? I'm just How do you know he knows about spiders? I don't know I'm what he knows I'm just saying about like I just I can do a thought experiment about like if I just stop somebody and said this um, is a hard one. This is probably the hardest one I've done. My point is... I, I, I usually don't do... Your factor fiction well. seem to take a brain like name mine. Name two types of spiders, Luke. Um, Black Widow, Banana, uh, Wolf. Arachnid. All right, that's pretty good. No, I've, I've read up on spiders, is what I mean. Like, I, I know a, enough about spiders to know, like, what Joe's saying could be true. But I also know that, like, Joe seems to get off on, like, tricking us. <laughs> <laughs> so, Luke, what I'm thinking is... He threw in the 40,000. He threw in the body weight thing. He's trying to pepper a lot of facts in this one fact. Uh, now, is that is that to try to throw us off, or is that because he's trying to sneak in some falsity? Am I trying to throw you off by throwing you off? Now, the <laughs> second part, yeah, which is classic Joe Genie move. But the second part, I would I would think he's trying. They're to brothers, by the way, guys. If you didn't know that, <laughs> I mean, I how is it not ever, evident at this point? I don't think we've ever yeah addressed it, yeah. but it's pretty. It kind of checks out, yeah, because Luke's is just like this cerebral fact, and ours is. We're going to fucking get you on this one. <laughs> Crazy fucked up shit, yeah. yeah. Um, but the... uh we talk about the... the, <laughs> the... Right. Oh, but the other thing he might be trying to get us on is the fact being wrong in the, the different direction than we think. Because it yeah. just has to be right. It could be they, they could eat our biomass in a day. And he said, and he's just because he's right. done that he's one like, to us. Yeah, he did that right. with the curiosity rover. The rover, curiosity thing, yeah. rover or, yeah, it was way less than it actually turned out to be. Yeah. So we have to think that mathematically, there is some amount of time that all the spiders in the world could eat all the humans in the world. Yeah. Now, and he even we, said you know, he even a- acknowledged that it's not anything to do with the realistic logistics no, no, of, it's, it's of pure, it yeah, happening. It's, it's pure. It's mathematics, just the mathematics yeah. of it. Yeah. So right. I would say, I, I I smell the angle you just said last that. He's saying they could do it within a year to make us think like, hmm, a year would be a short amount of time for spiders to eat humans. When in reality, for every one human, there's probably like a thousand spiders and we'd be done in like an hour. I say an hour. <laughs> wow. Luke's, Luke's an Luke's hour. Up in I went from a year to an hour. Wow. I like yeah. the confidence. Yeah. What do you think? Right. Mr. Wait, Genie? wait, maybe not an hour, though. No, no, he said an hour. What, well, no, do, what no, do you no, think, no, Mr. No, hold Genie? Hold on, hold on. Now Joe's trying to genie you. You're, you're, you're giving away more than the contract says, Luke. You just have to say whether his statement is fact or fiction false. or not. You're, you're, you're his trying statement to is pinpoint, false. Pinpoint, you're trying to pinpoint how long it takes spiders to eat everyone. That's a way, that's a way harder <laughs> thing than yeah, true false. I shouldn't do that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, It's yeah. like the long answer so, like yeah. test in school versus yeah. like the true false yeah, ones. Just, you just had to not yeah. be an idiot to take a true yeah, false test. Exactly, yeah. It's like not it's only did you not test. write true or false, but you <laughs> wrote oh, the wrong explanation. In, in you you just, it's like we didn't ask for you to show us your work, but you did it anyways and it was in the wrong language. On Thank true you. false tests, I would always just smell the question and then develop an instinct <laughs> To be like, just imagine Luke holding the paper in his face, just puffing. No, but I would smell it. I'd be like, oh, they're trying to get me to think this, but it's really about that. You know? Gotcha. Like, I would just smell the, like the lie. It's like, oh, that one. Yeah. Like I would, I, you SAT know what I would do is. is I would notice that my brain is like, oh, that's false, and then I would think to myself, yeah. no, 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 the question's decoying me into thinking yeah, false, but sure. it's true. And like I learned how to smell those types of questions, yeah. your and so your I would get a hundred on every it? true false test. It was the bullet. I was really packet. hoping you say I always got at least half of them right. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been great. Well, I made a combo like the T's and the F's. I just made like a sloppy T and a sloppy F. So Y T F. Oh, true false. True false. So like each yeah. one could be either, you know? Yeah, fifty percent. And if the teacher likes you, they just give it to you. Also, most of the teachers I had were dumb, so they're, like, writing true-false questions on their computer, like, to print out for the quiz tomorrow, and they're like, was Romeo not in love with a not-Juliet? And they think they're being clever, and you're just like, um, okay, a not-Romeo, a not-Juliet. But they got you to do what they wanted. (laughs) See, that's the trick. No, No, but, like, half the people in the class just got it wrong. Oh, it's incredibly dumb, but that's, you know... Or they replace one character name with a different one, and it's like... That's public school education. Try to get you to not notice it. It's like all the wrong ideas of education. Yeah. Have you you ever seen the test where it has, like, like several paragraphs of instructions? (laughs) And at the beginning yeah. of the test, but the first paragraph says in it, like, don't make any marks. All, yeah. like, re- no, it says read all, in- 
instructions before starting test, but there's a bunch of questions there. And then it says answer so-and-so like multiple choice and everyone just starts answering questions. And it says at the end of the instructions, just go to the last page and circle like the, that you read all of it. Yeah. And then, you know, it, it, and it's time. So kids just rush it to answer the questions course, without yeah. reading it. And then, and then they never get to the last page. Well, and it's like fail. user it's agreements. Like, nobody reads it. Right. Oh, that's another. We got to save that for the next. That would be a good theory, one. Yeah. I do I, read my user though. agreements and it sucks and it's exhausting. Yeah. Cause they're uh, awful. They're read... like, here are the rights that you weren't willing to read about that you were giving away by signing this. Because our product yeah. is so juicy. You just want to get on Facebook. You don't or, read. Your or privacy you know what? You can't away. function in quote unquote modern society without agreeing. Because spiders are eating you. So let's get back to that. Is uh, that a fact or else... fiction? Well, what is your guess? Fact or false. fiction? False. I say false. Why do you wait? You say... I think it's an hour. But that means that it's true then. No. No, no. I, I what I said was that if every oh, spider Johnny, help me out. I think he's trying to. No, no, no. no. Look, I got gotcha. you. Let, 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 he's let trying to just, wiggle. He's wait, trying Johnny, to wiggle. you're here as his attorney. I, I, I'm just gonna repeat the question, and you tell me. <laughs> I love in our other segment, Johnny's not a this. genie fucking with me. He's, he's now my lawyer. genie lawyer. <laughs> genie attorney. Genie. He, he works for a photo. <laughs> so if every spider on planet Earth decided today to only eat human, it would take a. It would take. Um, you said exactly a year. It would take about a year. Okay. So if it took an hour, that's not about a year. If it took an hour, that would be... Uh... Not about a year. True. Okay. Significantly less than I a year. I just don't want yeah. you to be eaten by spiders. False. So you say false. What do you say, Johnny? Oh, I already said fact before you started. I'm sticking with okay. it. Okay. Nice. So, I, I can't The change, genie can't knows change, it's but... better just to gamble 50-50 on I, these things. <laughs> I, I actually the, am the not The genie's got his genie go fingers and everything. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to go with fact. Okay, so what's interesting about this is that um, so humanity combined um, weighs about – there's 7 billion oh, – a little more than 7 billion humans. Point three now, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it's over 7 billion. And combined, we weigh a total of about um, – jeez, how much do we weigh? We weigh hundreds of billions or millions of tons. But – Spiders eat an estimated 400 million tons. Um, a, year? a year? Yeah. Okay. So spiders, if they all agreed, it would take them about a year to eat all of humanity. Oh, so a year was about the timeline. A year was about the timeline. <laughs> okay. So, so Luke was right, actually. Luke got this one. Luke was on. No, point. I got this one. Luke said false. I, said I tricked false. him well, into thinking it wasn't true. Well, well, no, you you got this one, Johnny, because you weren't willing to specify, which is what a genie would do is not specify. Wait, but right. I got it wrong what? though, because I said an hour. You said an hour, but you also guessed that what I said was false. Oh, I see. Oh, I, I thought. See. Yeah, I thought you said. Which is well, fair. That's why I, 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 I should have just kept my mouth shut. And just that's what it. he said. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's why he oh, actually yeah. wins because he's the genie. Right. <laughs> but you, you were on. You, uh, you got it basically. Yeah. I see. You got it. So yeah, spiders could basically eat us all if they wanted to. Okay. All right. Yeah. So we're at well, we we're at one fifty. We should wrap this up. Wow, we've been talking this long. Yeah. Oh, jeez. No. Well, th that's the system, man. <laughs> they just want you to think that time's a yeah, thing. Yeah, I don't I know. Say, I, do you have any final conspiracy? I don't know if I covered this, but I, I mentioned it earlier. But like, you know, you have the the crackpot conspiracy theories of UFOs, moon landing shit. But you do also get the the people on the left who like I had a an old roommate in the past that um just believed every like GMO conspiracy, every you know like. Um, well, GMOs are real. Just everything where, like, the answer would be, like, the system, man, you know? Yeah. And um, I what I did notice, which is worth saying, like, because sometimes it can border on sickness, you know? Um, I noticed there was, like, obsession, the whatever. same line that he, he would talk about, um, like, larger scale conspiracies and culture yeah. and whatnot. He, he thought, like, our old roommate broke the heat on purpose to, like, mess with the landlord. And you're like, that's and, a whole thing. And I was like, why do you think yeah. that? I was eating breakfast one morning, and, and he was like, isn't it obvious? Like, he blah, 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 and he had this whole story. And then he's like, plus, I think this person's freezing my eggs. I was like, 
What do you mean by that? You're like, that was never a sentence until now. <laughs> yeah. When you He's said He's like, it. well, I think they wake up and they put my eggs in the freezer. And then just before I wake up, they put them back in the fridge. Why would that be a, a situation? Well, so like, and I realized he had all these like stories all wrapped up and he was generally quiet unless you, you probed him a little bit, you know? And um, no, I mean, it was kind of sad too. It was like bordering on, on but a what, sickness But what does almost. putting the eggs in the freezer, is that like a, a, a mind game or does that Yeah, I think he thought eggs? people were doing mind games. He thought people were stealing does recyclables. It affect, does it affect the egg? Out of his car. He, he would say, did you take the recyclables out of my car? And the fridge is probably just too cold. No, exactly. The fridge is too cold. Like, depending on where you put shit, <laughs> but some how of the eggs start the fr- to gelatinize. But how does putting in the freezer make it better? Gelatinize. No, he, he thought somebody was fucking with him by doing that. Like, hey, good luck at breakfast this morning with your frozen eggs, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's so fucked up. You fuck. Yeah, why would he... Why? But I was Why? always like, okay, eating, I, see what you're I saying, was always yeah. eating breakfast. So when he came down into the kitchen, um, you know, I would be there and like, I, I would generally just kind of like, what's up? How's it going? Like, you know, and we would talk. But is, it, is it possible that some dumb person was like, there's no room in here for my sandwich. So I'll put his eggs in the freezer. No, I mean, anything's possible. And the well, weird, one of the weird thing is, is that I believed it for, for a little bit, like, cause he would say something and I'd be like, oh, wow, that's crazy. And then I thought about it, and then I thought, well, that could be true, maybe. Yeah. But then, like, I see. I got to know him enough, and I saw that you saw other like you noticed with yeah. like the moon landing how they believe um, eyewitness testimony for UFOs, but they don't believe it yeah, for the moon right. landing. Yeah. Like I, I noticed that many inconsistencies. Yeah. Another factor was like you know a sleeping problem where there would be like four days in a row of no sleep, and it just it was like a scary thing to hear that level of like of inconsistency and in thought it's so yeah. slippery that's the rabbit hole of falling into like like believing everything you know yeah well not um, having that discretion to choose between what's reality and what's clearly insanity in right case. right and so johnny i hope um i i tried to to show you my best uh not five years ago luke version of like understanding the conspiracy mindset but still being grounded in science yeah it was good we we that, that was pretty good. I tried to be less crazy and uh, yeah, you know, and that's I'm what much it's more about. Speculative about I can't it. believe we've been talking. Yeah, I'm much for more two skeptical. Hours. That's well, insane. Perfect. Well, I think there's... two hours is the limit. We should never go above two. Well, hold on, I would I got, expect I got them one to more then. buy a spear for more than I, two yeah. hours. Yeah. I just want to cover one more then before we go. Okay. Uh, about the 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 FCC and the new net neutrality thing. Oh man. There's there's this new theory uh, with the CIA and the NSA. And uh, they claim that they're silencing people as they talk about oh! that son of a genie. That what was genie good. Is. I was pouring a beer as he said that because I was like, I oh, this genie's got some shit I, to say. What I that ge- motherfucker. I thought wow. when he first started it, I was like, he's not going to do that you to us. You felt it? Cause, no, because he used to always do it like, well, blow up and then do it right away. Yeah. And so he started going like 30 seconds into a story. That was good. He's, he's evolving. This is like an evolutionary arms race about how to end a podcast. We'll get him next time. We'll, we'll Any last words to say to fuck with Johnny? Uh, no, I, I admit defeat in this case. All right. But, but we, you will win, be, Johnny. we will be back for episode six. Yeah. Um, let us know what you think. Uh, you know, uh, check out our Twitter. Check out our... Insta hashtag Email. <laughs> what did I say? Email. <laughs> Email. Uh if you if you're listening and enjoying, yeah, like the, please the, subscribe, like, share, rate, and yeah. and comment. Like all these things. Send it to your friends who might be data. interested. It, it helps it. a podcast like you, sort of become a yeah, thing. Yeah, if you know somebody who you're like, oh, this was cool. I think they would get along with this. They would like this. Share they, it. Yeah. Yeah, they would feel interested by this. Send them the link. That would be cool. And uh, we'll, we'll give us one more. cent per episode. Think about how little that would be. Yeah, or that thirty be... cents. That's thirty times more. That would be... And it's still nothing. That would be less than 50 cents a year, and we'll take it. I'll, I'll definitely take less yeah. than 50 cents a year. I'll take whatever. I'll know? take whatever from all of you. I think you. Patreon takes one cent out of like 100 cents, something oh, really? like that. Why haven't we been doing that? I mean, we just did it today. Well, Check you, us out on Patreon. Please like us. At, uh, did you, all right, Joe, we should like end us? this. I'm all right, drunk. Just hit the, yeah. hit the stop all right, button. See you all next time. See you time. for episode six. Thank you. Ha <laughs> 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 you fucks. All right, see you guys next week.